Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. What a difference today, Huh. How long have you been tracking our car's value with Carvana? Just like seven months. Should we sell it? We hold. Hold. Silver vans are going for more right now. Should we? Oh. Our low mileage is paying off. You think we should? Hold. Depreciation's really heating up. You think? Oh. We just did 2.5%. Hold. Now. Play on it. Already sold to Carvana. Go to Carvana and track your car's value today. In Houston, the Cougars wearing Oilers throwback Love Ya Blue jerseys in their 2023 opener with the UTSA Roadrunners in town. The Roadrunners wearing their white jerseys and the fans enduring the heat. Temperature in the upper 90s. And by the time the sun sets, it'll be in the 80s. Along with Robert Smith, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for joining us. This is 2023 season kicking off for these two teams that are each moving into a new conference this year. And for the offenses of both teams, they still carry that reputation of high scoring offenses, averaging more than 36 points a game. And if you go back, Robert, to last year when they played, this was the fourth meeting. Road team has always won. This was this was wild. Overtime forced. And then in the second overtime, they trade touchdowns and two-point conversions. Clayton Toon had a one-yard run. DeCorian Clark, a 13-yard reception from Frank Harris in the third overtime. Toon scored on the two-point run, and the defense prevented UTSA from answering. Houston won it three overtimes, 37-35. Boy, that was an exciting one as well. And you look at Dana Holgerson, 17 years in the Big 12 in total, and now he's back in the Big 12, and he's brought a lot of players with him that have Big 12 experience. A lifelong Texan, Jeff Trailer, at age 55, entering his fourth season. They won the last two Conference USA titles, but in the American Athletic Conference to start this season. And as I mentioned, the temperatures, and boy, this is cooling off to how it has been in Texas, <laughs> and you've been out there. Oh, well, I lived down there in the Dallas area, and we've been in triple digits quite a bit. So lucky down there in Houston that they're in the double digits. UTSA won the toss, deferred, so Houston back to receive. Peyton Sawyer, the deep man, will not have an opportunity. And we'll get a look at Donovan Smith, who has that Big 12 experience. Yeah, he has that Big 12 experience. He played for Texas Tech a year ago. And when Houston won that first game in triple overtime, second game, they played Texas Tech, lose in double overtime. Donovan Smith, a big part of that. And he is also, like Clayton Toon, dangerous with his arm and his legs. Leading on a strong offensive line, emphasizing this week when we talked with some of the coaches, we're a run first team. With his Big 12 experience when he was at Texas Tech, 359 yards, a career best for him. And it's an inside hand of Tony Mathis Jr who is the most experienced of the running backs. Yes, and he is from West Virginia, and he's one of those guys that Dana Holderson recruited when he was at West Virginia. And we talked about it. a lot of guys with Big 12 experience on the offense and the defense that have transferred in this year to Houston. Mathis Jr. this time, what a defensive play. As we take a look at the primary players and the starters, for this Houston offense. Mention the offensive line, Patrick Paul, an elite pass blocker. Yeah, he really is. Solid offensive unit. Two of those guys, captains. But really, the big question is going to be, who's going to replace Tank Dell? Watch for number two, Matthew Golden, to emerge as a weapon this season. On a third down six, Mathis Jr. remains the back. Smith set to throw. Donovan Smith on the move, can't find anybody in a big defensive stand by UTSA. And Trey Moore 
who is the lead by example defensive star of the Road Runners. Yeah, and they just can't say enough about this guy. When you watch him on film, he just leaps off the film. And defensive coordinator Jess Lepp said he's the kind of guy you have to protect him from himself, meaning when he's in practice, he is full goal all the time. But that transfers very well into the game, both as a run stopper and getting after the quarterback. He's just everywhere on game day. Chris Carpenter back to receive as Lane Wilkins booms this kick, bounces inside the 30, and a good roll for Houston. Roadrunners will take over on offense, and Frank Harris already two degrees at age 24, entering his seventh season in college football. Of course, had a knee injury back in April. He couldn't even walk back at that point. Consider giving up football, as head coach told us, but he's hung in there. Comes in with 99 career touchdowns. Yeah, and it, and it was those complications from the surgery, really, that caused the problems. Was ready to walk away from the game. But Jeff Trailer talked about him and said he is a coach's dream and called him a social savant. Just knows how to get along in any type of environment, like Donovan Smith, dangerous with his arm and his legs. One of the most exciting players in college football. You saw his numbers from last year. But great defense as Kavori and Barnes will maybe lose a yard. A.J. Halsey making the tackle. See what kind of pace they go with here. Cooter fans dressed in the red to exemplify the great defense. And there is a look on second down after a loss of one at the 19-yard line. Kavori and Barnes the back. Harris hesitates on the move, getting pressure, and throws that one out of bounds. So the offense for the Roadrunners, and these are the primary players. Yeah, that offensive line, some guys with some starting experience, but they've shifted around a lot. Look at the center, number 64, Ernesto Almarez. He's played all along that offensive line at the right tackle position a year ago. It's a big matchup for me to watch today. How is that offensive line going to perform today? JT Clark out with an injury. One of the top receivers for the Roadrunners. On a third down, 11. Barnes remains the back with the 19. Blitz is on. Picked up. Harris floats one. And... Is there a flag? It is incomplete. No flag. Tyke Ogle Kellogg was the intended target as Alex Hogan was back there on the coverage. Looks like some contact here. Yeah, maybe a little bit of contact on this one, but Alex Hogan, you see him pulling the jersey just a little bit. Maybe he got a got away with a little one right there, but if he is not pulling the receiver, if the receiver's body is not getting moved, sometimes they won't call it, but Hogan, versatile, gonna play safety, can play corner, play nickel, and also is involved in the run game. Luke Richmond is our referee, and Lucas Dean back to punt in his fifth year as UTSA's punter. That one rolls out of bounds, so for two High-scoring offenses, at least based on what we saw last year and the talent we talked about this year. The defense dominates in the first couple of series. You're watching college football on FS1. Let's go out with Space Hall. Subway refreshed everything, and now they're slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the new Subway Series subs are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Have you been behind me this whole time? Yep. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway, like the Subway Series menu. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. For free. That's what I'm talking about. Order in the Subway app today. Baby, it's over. I mean, we both saw this coming. Your paint is really bad. What? I said, best coffee I've ever had. Should've used Bear. Sorry, side wear. No, I said, should've used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. Is this your plan to watch the game today? I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan, but you know what it is? 
my plan from Verizon. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us, a $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, only on Verizon. After a 40-yard punt, let's check out our stay in the game, sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. Well, for UTSA, it's protect the football. Anytime you're on the road, you have to be careful. The team that wins a turnover battle usually wins the game. They also have to stop that run. Get a little bit of a ground attack with that air raid for Dana Holgerson's offense. For Houston, how do you incorporate those new receivers and defensive line discipline? Frank Harris, great with short area quickness. He can take off in a hurry. You want to rush him, but you got to be careful. Stacy Sneed is the back. Smith from the pocket. Incomplete for Stacy Sneed. Let's check on the Roadrunners defense and the primary players that you're going to see. Yeah, these guys very talented along the defensive line, but at that linebacker spot, it's Trey Moore. He's the guy that just leaps off of the film, plays with such a high level of intensity and a lot of experience on the back end and a lot of versatile pieces. So defensive coordinator Jess Lepp can really change up his looks, bringing both safeties down into the box or playing free safety. Second down, 10, a hesitation. Smith keeps, and Donovan Smith hit as he got up to the 46, fell to the 47-yard line. Rashad Wisdom from the secondary came up to make the stop. Yeah, and he's very good at making those stops, Chris. He's got 255 career tackles approaching that career record for UTSA, which is 293. So he comes up from that safety spot. Great form tackle, and Donovan Smith is not a little guy. You've got to bring that hat when you're coming in to tackle him. And this is a big question, always coming into week one, because you just don't get that many days over the summer, and you don't get many live reps. They don't have the preseason like they do in the NFL and high school for some reason, so this is the first time they get to tackle live. Smith at 6'5 and 240. On a third down, the blitz is on. They try and run for the first down and don't get it and maybe to try and go on fourth down let's see and along that defensive line you're going to see some movement these guys you see them slant down confusing the blocks of that offensive line and all, and these guys they may line up one way but slanting an angle slanting and angling gets them in different spots Brandon Campbell on that carry, but on fourth and four, lining up to punt. And they do, sliding and falling back at the 15 Carpenter. It'll be a first down for the Roadrunners, scoreless early here in hot and heavy Houston. reached peak fall the dq fall blizzard menu snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie they're back plaid cardigan Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots they did it too much fall nah peak fall achieved dq happy tastes good what if my type 2 diabetes takes over what if all i do isn't enough or what if i can do diabetes differently now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Manjaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Manjaro.
Fox College Football at FS1 is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay at TD ECU Stadium in Houston, Texas. Defense dominating on the first few series. After 38 yard punt, get a look at Frank Harris and look what he's accomplished. Yes, there's been injuries. We had COVID, so he's entering his seventh season. It's been around so long. His teammates tease him. They call him old man and grandpa. <laughs> I've never called you that. No, you haven't, and you better not. I'll do the jokes. You just do the analysis. Uh, another good defensive play. Devin McEwen carried on that first down and picked up a yard. We have not had a first down yet. A hesitation, and he keeps as he gets up across the 21-yard line. We've been talking defense. Let's look at Houston's defense. And boy, they've got some heavy people up front. In fact, that's what... The Roadrunners talked about that that front of the Cougars. Yeah, number 12, David Uguebu, the transfer from Oklahoma along that defensive line is one of those guys to watch. And Oklahoma played inside linebacker, said he wanted to play more on the line, rushing the passer, and that's exactly what he's going to be doing for Houston. And the passer, Harris, no, now he's the runner. Tries hard across the 26-yard line. It was a third down and four. Nelson Caesar making the stop. We're just talking about people up front. So that is our first first down of the game as he picked up five and they go right away without a huddle here. Rocco Griffin has come in at running back. There's four or five different backs that the Roadrunners plan to use. Protection is good, but he can't find anybody. And he'll just float one safely into the turf. It'll bring up a second down 10. Yeah, we talked about that offensive line for UTSA. You know, on that first run, you just saw all kinds of guys break free. But now when Frank Harris is dropping back, we're seeing them doing a much better job protecting, giving him an opportunity to scan downfield and even take off a couple of times. That's what makes Frank Harris so dangerous. You protect him, he's going to pick you apart eventually. He's already on the watch list for a number of awards. Straight ahead is Kavorian Barnes. It will bring up a third down. Yeah, Frank Harris on the 2023 Walter Camp O'Brien Maxwell Manning Unitas watch list. He's, he's a more <laughs> watch list than, than you are from your days at Ohio State of the Vikings. Uh, there we go with the jokes. But on that last carry was Kavorian Barnes, who was a freshman last year, didn't get started until later in the season, but 825 yards rushing in his last eight games. On third down, Harris is going to be sacked. Thrown to the turf by Nelson Caesar. Well, and Nelson Caesar takes advantage of the left tackle. Walker Beatty, who was playing defensive line a year ago for UTSA. They needed some help out there, and you can see he gets that long arm. Why is the long arm so effective as a pass rusher? Because it gets inside of the frame of that tackle. He gets that arm in there, pushes him back, gets Walker Beatty on his back, and then gets Frank Harris on his back as well. Caesar had four sacks last year for the Houston Cougars. Back to receive at the 30-yard line. And Carpenter is loose. Chris Carpenter all the way down around the 20-yard line of the Roadrunners. And worth mentioning, Houston, the only school the last four years that has had in college football a punt return and kickoff return for a touchdown. Malik Fleming on the punt return. Yeah, we talked about Malik Fleming. Fleming is that guy playing nickel, playing safety, playing cornerback, and we talked about his return ability as well. Just an all-around unbelievable athlete. Houston is known for outstanding kickoff and punt returns. And where they rank since 2020. Tenth last year. Forty six yard punt and a forty eight yard return.
Brandon Campbell carrying. Boy, it's early going, obviously, Parker. But I'll tell you what. It is that offensive line, defensive line matchup always. You talk about what are teams doing in the trenches. And that UTSA offensive line and defensive line so far are winning that battle. Smith will keep. Donovan Smith working inside the 10-yard line. It'll be a first and goal for the Cougars. And Dana Holgerson talked about it. We knew Clayton Toon could run. He said, really, this offense isn't going to change much with Donovan Smith. The difference, though, with a guy like Donovan Smith, six foot five, 241 pounds, he can get downhill and just scare the heck out of defensive backs when they try and come up and tackle him. But you can see on that last run, also some good acceleration. He picked up 13 over the big punt return. Set this up. Brandon Campbell is the back. On a first and goal. For the end zone, touchdown, Houston! Donovan Smith completes to Joseph Manjack the fourth. Well, it looked like there was a little bit of confusion in the backfield. It was going to be a little bit of a play action RPO. You can see Donovan Smith in the backfield. Running back never quite came over for the fake, but it didn't matter. Manjack, who had a touchdown against UTSA a year ago, gets another one here today for the Cougars. The extra point is good. It's seven to nothing. The outstanding punt return of 48 yards by Malik Fleming. And then the touchdown toss a moment ago. Donovan Smith to Joseph Manjack, and it's seven up the Cougars. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. What if my type 2 diabetes takes over? What if all I do isn't enough? Or what if I can do diabetes differently? Now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Mount Jaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Mount Jaro. It's back. Applebee's all you can eat boneless wings, just $12.99. <laughs> Donovan Smith, his first touchdown as a member of the Houston Cougars coming over from Texas Tech. Yeah, and that one was kind of well covered, but Manjack was the beneficiary there. A pinpoint accuracy by our guy, Donovan Smith, coming in, making an immediate impact with his legs earlier on the drive and placing that ball perfectly to Manjack. But it was a special teams play, the Malik Fleming punt return, that set it all up. Roadrunners trailing in the game inside the five yard line and up across the 20. He is carpeted. That's where the offense will take over. Monday night, the AL East leading Orioles continue their quest for the division title to take on Shohei Otani and the Angels. That's Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific on FS1. And the Orioles continue to be one of the surprise teams. Top record in the American League. And here, 
It'll be up to Frank Harris to try and get the offense going, trailing 7 0 in the opening quarter. Kavorian Barnes, they've used already three, a couple of different backs, but Barnes has been the guy who's been in there the most, had that surgery on a torn labrum, and slow to get back from that. And the flip up to the 40 yard line, and the catch is made by Taiki Ogo Kellogg. We'll get more work today. There's a flag down as well. JT Clark again to Corian Clark is out with a knee injury. Tried to take that right up into the game, but out of the receiver downfield. Offense, number 58, five yard penalty. First down. You can see it was that run pass option look, and that happens sometimes. Those guys get downfield, and when Frank Harris throws ends up throwing the ball those guys have already gotten too far downfield and then you get a flag like that Jeff trailer now in the American Athletic Conference after back-to-back -back conference USA titles penalty backs him up on first down a quick toss we need a block outside tackled right away couldn't even make it back to the 19 yard line Nice tackle there from Jalen Emery and one of those young guys, just a sophomore from Pearland, Texas, just outside of Houston. And we talked about it again. You know, this is the first time a lot of these guys are getting that live tackling early in the season. So a nice job there coming up on the little bubble screen. Have a member Fisher's of the Cougars down in pain. Chidozi like Wonka. Yeah, Chidozi Wonka. Wonka. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. You've earned this, so hold it up high. You always show up no matter how small the show is. You keep lifting, keep looking, keep going. Because anyone can have a dream, but you have what it takes to chase it. You are fighters, and this is your reward. But don't, the mark of a fighter. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Found it. Is that good? I, I can't tell. There's no such thing as out of bounds. Find adventure at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. I was referred to Dr. Shaw by an orthopedic. Just amazing the way that he took care of me. And I still see Dr. J and follow his recommendations. I'm thankful that I've met him and he has brought me a long way. Chidozi Wonkwa, the junior for the Houston Cougars, being helped to the sideline. He got up okay after the last play, Robert, and then it like fell to his knees. And that's the injury timeout. Yeah, and you don't want to speculate, but you could see he was clearly favoring that right side and needed help getting off of the field. So he just kind of went down, collapsed there. And that's unfortunate. It's part of the game. But he's one of those guys that Dana Holgerson called out and, and wanted to point to as a leader on this team, somebody that had really emerged and provided a lot of size. They call that guy the human block eater on the inside of that defensive line. And that offensive line from UTSA has kind of had its way so far. And now with one crew out of there, we'll see what they're able to do. Maybe get that run game cranked up a little bit. Anthony Holmes Jr. will come in to replace him on the defensive line. Barnes the back on second and 11 for the Roadrunners. Fake. Harris completes Joshua Cephas up across the 30-yard line. Cephas now 40 consecutive games with at least one catch. Former high school quarterback, the senior from Houston. And picked up a first down. Straight ahead, bursting is Barnes. 
One of the better runs of the day. Well, we have talked about it with Juan Qua out of the game. Dorian Barnes able to get right up the middle there. Picked up another first. This time Harris completes over the middle to the 41 yard line of Houston. It was Carpenter who hauled that in. Yeah, Chris Carpenter, very talented. He's been featured in the return game as well. First ever kickoff return for a touchdown UTSA a year ago. Another completion going up tempo, and that's working well. Dan Dishman, the tight end, moves that upfield. Boy, and this can be tough for those big guys up front. When you've got weather like that and you get these up-tempo offenses and the offense doesn't substitute so the defense can't substitute you can see right now a bunch of cougars running off the field in that big time substitution those guys are gassed yeah they said they play 30 players in the secondary on defense as well for the end zone and an overthrow slightly for joshua cephas best drive of the game so far for UTSA and Harris now four out of eight. Barnes has been the lead back. We've also had Harris run. Griffin has carried as well. It's over four minutes remaining in the open at quarter. Barnes continuing on this drive as the back. And handoff. David Abador from his receiver's pockets all the way inside the five-yard line. And that'll be a first and goal for the Roadrunners. Yeah, and of course, Dana Holgerson was the coach at West Virginia when they used that jet sweep to full effect in the Orange Bowl against Clemson back in 2011 when Geno Smith was the quarterback. Got a little jet sweep action right there from Amador for a nice game for the Roadrunners. Barnes, Gaborian Barnes for a touchdown, Roadrunners. Go ahead and get amped up, young man. You're going to see Kavorian Barnes collide with number six, Noah Guzman, on the defensive side. And he's going to go in there with the right pad level, with the legs churning, most importantly, with the attitude. I'm not going to be stopped here at the two-yard line. I'm getting this thing in. Almost lost the football there. Maybe just a little bit too excited getting ready for a celebration. That's Tate sent out on the extra point. Barnes had eight touchdowns last year. Remember, he had to battle an injury. Jeff Trailer made sure his back even though he looked like he was stopped staying upright to work himself into the end zone. We well, can't say enough what that injury to Wanqua does to this defense for Houston. You lose a guy that kind of presence 295 pounds in the middle of that defense and that's exactly what UTSA has exploited on the rest of this drive. Man that was their best drive of the game when you look at what they did on the first two uh, with the missing defender you just referenced for Houston an 80 yard drive. Kavorian Barnes did all the work on the ground and some impressive throws when they went to a bit of an up tempo from Harris. Tied now at seven just under three and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Peyton Sawyer is back to receive the kick two schools really in what is a great football state carrying a Texas sized chip on their shoulder <laughs> they want a lot more respect whether you're in the American Athletic Conference or you're now in the Big 12 as the Cougars are and the Roadrunners a new conference challenge for them and much expected and this will sail bounce back out to the 25. Well, big year at San Antonio last December. UTSA repeated as Conference USA champs. Frank Harris, Conference Player of the Year. And then of the spring, the Spurs won the NBA draft lottery. Victor Wembanyama was drafted the summer. Two Spur legends inducted into the Hall of Fame, Tony Parker and Greg Popovich. And then today, UTSA takes a step forward as they officially play in, as mentioned, the American Athletic Conference.
UTSA and for those Texas San Antonio me, me. the 2-1-0 oh. triangle of toughness I love that yes. phrase on first down Smith wants to go deep and is throwing deep down the middle of the field and it's caught what a grab Samuel Brown even though the coverage was good he hauled it in Sam Brown goes up and gets this thing. Donovan Smith lays this thing up into the air. Cam Alexander back there on the coverage. Pretty good job in the coverage. He was in phase, meaning he was with the receiver on that one. So he's turned back trying to make a play, but Donovan Smith really got that thing up so that Brown could elevate and bring that thing in. Nice job. And he had to fight all the way down to the ground on that one. West Virginia pipeline going downtown with Sam Brown. 47-yard pickup. Saw how high he had to leap. Here comes a flag on first down. It looks like this one might be a false start on Snead. You don't often see running backs getting called with false starts. May be him, though. False start. Offense. Number 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. That looked like a Tank Jenkins at that right guard spot. Maybe uh, Snead saw him move, but he definitely moved before the snap on that one. Donovan Smith with a touchdown pass earlier to give Houston the 7-0 advantage. UTSA responds with that 80-yard drive. Penalty backs him up after another big play. On a first and 15. Smith. Rolling and floating one out of bounds. Mike Burchett, the quarterback's coach, 12 years with Holgerson, is the primary play caller now. Yeah, he's the play caller. And what we talked about with Dana Holgerson, you know, air raid, everybody knows air raid offenses like to throw the football but he really credits Mike Burchett for giving them more of an emphasis on that run game they do a nice job of mixing things up that last play right there though excellent job of coverage from that UTSA defense strung Donovan Smith out ran out of real estate with no place to go with the ball no place to run it for Stacy Snead. It'll bring up a third down. And again, it's that UTSA defensive line. We've been seeing it all day long. They are definitely not staying where they are at the snap of the ball. Defensive coordinator Jess Lepp is using movement along that defensive line to confuse the blocking angles for that offense of Houston to great effect. And they just have not been able to get that conventional run game going. It's all come from Donovan Smith at the QB spot. Tony Mathis in the backfield dancing around with Donovan Smith on a third and 14. Looking like just a four-man rush for the Roadrunners. And that's what it is. And Smith has to get out of the pocket. And Smith will take off. Quite an effort. He needed 14, so it will be a fourth down as Avery Morris made sure he didn't get upfield. But at least makes it a lot easier on your kicker right there. If you're going to attempt a field goal, but he's staying on the field. It's like they're going to go. They only need a yard. And Donovan Smith, remember, six foot five, 240 pounds himself. They did some research on going forward on fourth and. Uh, they said that they were behind by some 50 percent. So head coach Dana Holgerson said we've upgraded our going on fourth some 50 percent based on the yardage. And on fourth and one, Tony Mathis not going to get it. Oh, we can see where this spot's going to be. That's going to be close. <laughs> but as he got up there, he met a wall and couldn't advance it. Wisdom got there first. Let's check to see if they're giving it to him. He thinks he got it. Yeah, I think uh, based on where the official was standing there and where he, he walked in. <laughs> well, I think UTSA has an opinion on whether or not he made it. Yeah. Maybe not a PG one. But you see, Ligon, Ligon tried to get in there, but I think those guys got in there just to. Uh, they're we'll, we'll they're going to they're gonna measure to make this. Okay, yeah, that was, that was Jamal Ligon. <laughs> And Not sure who it was yelling. They got some, yeah, somebody else. They got some support. <laughs> well, it's that left yeah. foot, the old left foot, right foot spot. I guess yeah. based on where that thing is, that's going to be short. Yeah. On a fourth down gamble, 
and fired up head coach for the Roadrunners. Let's take another look at this play as Jeff Trailer is welcoming his defense over to the sideline. Well, Mathis there, does a nice that, job making Ligon miss. They pulled him back a little bit, but he kept going. Tried to get a feel. Look at that. Four Roadrunners. Yeah, that's it. But over he, there. It's a, it's a nice job by Mathis on that one, hanging out on the football. You can see Jeff Trailer's like, that's that triangle of toughness. I'm talking about the 2 one -oh, baby. These schools only what a three-hour drive apart from San Antonio to Houston. And a 7-7 game here with 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So they passed up a field goal try and just missed up fourth and one. Harris's throw, catch made at the 24-yard line. Ogle Kellogg, one of the most, he got the, we talked to the head coach, he said one of the most improved players on offense, Tyke Ogle Kellogg, is going to see quite a bit of action today with DeCorian Clark. Out yeah. of action. Yeah, and offense coordinator Justin Burke said that he's really matured. He knows the offense much better. And with Zakari Franklin, their leading receiver, taking off, transferring to Ole Miss, they've needed some guys to emerge in that wide receiver spot. Joseph Cephas, of course, he was back. But it was big for them to get a guy like Tyke Ogle Kellogg at that stage where he's really ready to emerge. Of course, Chris Carpenter is kind of a probably the fastest player on the team, also at that receiving spot. They have five seconds to try to figure out what's going on. Looks like a timeout. And it is UTSA using the timeout on a second down five with five seconds remaining in the opening quarter. But Jeff Trailer is a hot coaching candidate beyond where he is now. He's happy with what he's done and built up this program in its 13th season. But look what he in this program since 2021. Most wins in college football behind Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, UTSA. The Roadrunners are fourth on the list. Yeah, it's really amazing. When you think about what the program was before he got in there, I think that was what was really impressive, just how quickly and dramatic that turnaround was for the Roadrunners. And he knew, like, I, I, I need you to be able to commit. I need you to spend more money to to allow me to bring in better players, and you could see what they were able to do. I mean, leaping almost 100 marks here from where the offense was to where they are now. And after their first timeout, Harris still has it. Harris passing. And Cephas, Joshua Cephas, was able to make the catch. And yeah, he says, I got it. That's the end of the opening quarter. Not as much offense as we thought we'd see, but things are heating up here in Houston. It's seven all with the <laughs> Cougars and Roadrunners. We're jamming. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbrel, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can dramatically relieve RA and PSA symptoms, including fatigue for some. It can stop joint damage and in PSA can leave skin clear or almost clear. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Rinvoke. And take back what's yours. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. Cover more ground. 
in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. I'm the team mascot. Boy, am I running late. Oh, <laughs> what a hit. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to cover that might take your season. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem like me. Fox College Football on FS1 is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. And the reason the timeout, Nike Ogle Kellogg, his helmet had come off, so he got to go out for a play, so they had to use a timeout. And now to start the second quarter, pass in traffic across the 40-yard line. It's Robert Henry comes in after Kavorian Barnes at the running back spot with Robert Smith, Chris Myers. Thanks for being with us from Houston. Defense has dominated the first few series, but last couple of drives, each of the offenses got going. And a big stop by Jeff Trailer's defense on a fourth and one. When Houston passed up a field goal try and continuing that drive. Harris incomplete. But you can see that entire offensive line moving to the right side on that one and then try and get that little boot action. So you're trying to give that appearance, give those false keys, everything going to the right, getting everybody flowing. Just couldn't get that ball to Joshua Cephas. Harris, 7 out of 12, 70 yards so far in the game. He's run it three times, but hasn't gotten much yardage on the ground. Third down, eight. Pressure coming. There's a hole. There's a flag. And there's a completion inside the 45-yard line to Joshua Cephas. And, of course, being a left-handed quarterback, rolling to his right, the more difficult throw. But you can see, even with that, Frank Harris able to make the Holding. completion. Offense, number 75. 10-yard penalty. Third down. Yeah, Nelson Caesar applied the pressure. And it's going to be Tatafu on the left-hand side. And he is just kind of getting trucked. Got him on roller skates. He's like, okay, I'm going down, taking you with me. It gets called for the hold. Now third at 18. Deep drop by the Cougars. And this is one of those kind of plays. You, it's very hard to complete a pass that far downfield. Got to get something underneath and allow somebody to make someone miss. Kavorian Barnes carries. Interesting call on third and 18. And now it's going to be fourth down for the Roadrunners. Well, just kind of waving the white flag on that one. You're right. It's a very unusual call. Now, you can see that sometimes when you're in a position on the field where you're going to be going for it on fourth down, catch a defense by surprise, get a good chunk of it. But very little opportunity, I think, in that situation, even with those defensive backs all the way removed. Lucas Dean standing inside the 20, ready to put it away. And Malik Fleming back to receive if he has the chance. It's a short kick. He's one again who had that 48-yard punt return that set up <laughs> their only touchdown. A little Keystone Cops action over there. We'll check that spot, but Houston has the football tied at seven. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. The journeys life takes you on rarely follow a straight path. But it's the detours that make the trip worthwhile. Whatever discoveries you make along the way, whatever unexpected turns you take, it's nice to have someone along for the ride. And whether you're set on your destination or just trying to enjoy the scenery, we're built for the journey with you. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. Honey, have you seen my cell phone? But don't just imagine. My park came to life? Ooh, a plot twist! You stem to build. Ta -da! Create. She did it. And change the world. Who's with me? I'm more of a two feet on the ground kind of guy. Oh, no, no, no. oh, it's gonna hurt tomorrow. If she can stem, so can you. Find out more at She Can Stem. Back 
here in Houston. Bust a little robot. <laughs> Bust a little robot. <laughs> With Robert Smith, uh, uh, Chris Myers. And, but fan, you know, the fans are just happy to have football back. We're having great college football already to start the 2023 season. And with the Roadrunners and the Cougars, here we go after just a 26-yard punt. Houston from their own 40. And Donovan Smith well protected and fires a nice throw. And moving inside the 40 is Manjack, who had the touchdown earlier for Houston. Boy, Donovan Smith just has a cannon. You can see him once again finding his man, Joseph Manjack, right over the middle. But he gets that thing planted, releases, and throws an absolute laser. Quick toss here. Samuel Brown has it. Gets inside the 35. Elliott Davison making the tackle. It's interesting. Manjack has been the go-to guy, but Matthew Golden does not have a catch yet in this game. Yeah, a little bit surprising. Set the University of Houston freshman touchdown record a year ago with seven TD receptions. But it just seems that Donovan Smith, maybe based on the way that this UTS defense is playing against Matthew Golden, able to find Manjack at a higher clip. Second down five. Hit hard as he lets it go. And intercepted. Oh, he didn't hang on. Falling into the end zone. A chance for the takeaway. It was in his hands. Jamal Ligon went all the way back there on the coverage. Yeah, and this can happen. You you said it, partner. He was going to be taking a big old hit on that one. Donye Taylor comes in there. doesn't allow Donovan Smith to step through and get that one. But then it's Jamal Ligon on the coverage all the way downfield, wishing that he had another shot at that one. Clap in those hands. But those hands did him no good. Well, yeah, he, no, he's <laughs> frustrated. Yeah, he wanted he wanted the the, the pick. He, uh, uh, I, could get, I got through the int part of interception before it hit the ground. <laughs> and now on third down, off oh. the fingertips, it's going to be fourth and five. That was a pass for Matthew Golden. Well, out just a little bit in front of him, Donovan Smith had that same heat on that one that's one where you might want to throw the change up you know you don't want to throw the fastball on that one make sure that you throw a nice catchable ball had plenty of time on that one to get it in there to Matthew Golden Jack Martin will try a field goal here from 51 yards How about that first field goal attempt since 21 with Alabama at the time after two seasons with the tide the kick is up there Pushed it. And not good. Well, they went earlier on fourth and short, but that was around the 20 yard line. So the defense continues to keep these explosive offenses in check. The missed field goal leaves us still tied at seven. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. The journeys life takes you on rarely follow a straight path. But it's the detours that make the trip worthwhile. Whatever discoveries you make along the way, whatever unexpected turns you take, it's nice to have someone along for the ride. And whether you're set on your destination or just trying to enjoy the scenery, we're built for the journey with you. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. Honey, have you seen my cell phone? But don't just imagine. My park came to life? Ooh, a plot twist. Use STEM to build. Ta-da! Create. She did it! And change the world. Who's with me? I'm more of a two feet on the ground kind of guy. No, 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 no. Hurt tomorrow. If she can stem, so can you. Find out more at She Can Stem. In a 7 7 game, just under 12 minutes to go. Two teams that averaged 
more than 36 points a game last year. Remember UTSA 16 returning starters number of new players on the Houston side of the ball. But it's a seven all game as the field goal miss sets up Frank Harris and a first down he completes set dropped at the 40 wasn't sure if Oscar Cardenas would have had a first down the reliable five year fifth year senior tight end who's on the Mackey watch list <laughs> and he's a big target too there aren't many players like him in college football or in the pros even he kind of reminds me of Patrick Ricard who plays for the Ravens played some fullback he's 285 pounds Barnes drifts in the backfield at second and ten he gets the football and has a little bit of room here comes a flag I don't think that's a mouthpiece oh, okay <laughs> that, there's some hit, hitting going is on out a, there we got that, mouthpieces flying was around. that a yellow mouthpiece or an <laughs> orange was, mouthpiece it was a yellow mouthpiece you got the color right just <laughs> not the object <laughs> whose mouthpiece I want to know if he's okay Harris on the move and has a first down Cephas to midfield talk about replacing Jakari Franklin the leading receiver from a year ago and of course JT DeCorey and Clark out with an injury picking Cephas. up 13 on that play and here's another nice try but unable to hold on as Carpenter coverage was good Isaiah Hamilton who is the the top corner one of the faster players on that Houston defense their best cover guy was right there yeah, and we talked about the guys that have transferred in from the Big 12, but they also brought some guys from the lower divisions, and that was was Isaiah Hamilton. Played an F, FCS a year ago, but they say he has tremendous ball skills. You can see him plastered right there. On Barnes. Barnes on second and 10. Dances out of bounds. He gets inside the 40-yard line. Barnes with the carry. Seven carries, averaging over five a rush. And a fresh set of downs. Back to Barnes. If it's working, stay with it. <laughs> At the 35, and then shove back. Is that another yellow mouthpiece? It is. Boy, there is some hit going on down there. There is, and we can see Cardenas coming in. They got a little bit of counter action. Cardenas pulling up as a lead blocker. He's one of those kind of guys. You talk about those snot bubble kind of hits, uh, the, the buckle your chin strap kind of days. If Cardenas is coming in there, you better keep that mouthpiece in if you can. If they pick that up, that would be littering. As on the move is Harris. He's got some jets and gets out of bounds around the 25 yard line. Harris on the keeper. Well, we talked about the discipline that's needed for playing against a guy like Frank Harris. Doesn't quite have the speed that we saw of a guy like Kyler Murray, but that same kind of, kind of quick movement, that acceleration, and they saw plenty of it a year ago. Have to understand when you rush a guy like that, like Frank Harris, have to be disciplined. Can't let him escape the pocket. Rocco Griffin is in the game. He gets the carry and gets rocked right away. So that was a first down play previously best run of the game for Harris and then the first down play to Griffin a moment ago. Yeah, we saw Alex Hogan coming up from that safety spot. He's another one of those versatile pieces as a defender. Came up did a nice job getting on the edge understanding where the back was going to attempt to bounce came in and made the stop. So I'm adjusting a helmet there. We've seen some mouthpieces flying. We have a timeout. 928 before half. Next weekend, Boulder should be rocking for Coach Prime's home debut as Deion Sanders. What a successful debut today in a wild game. You saw it earlier. Uh, Fox, I know that cracks you up. Before. He's a guy, you know, it's all about him, but he backed it up. Big noon Saturday, kicking off on Fox. Deion Sanders, the Colorado against Nebraska, Saturday noon Eastern on Fox. Second down, 10 after the timeout. Uh, interesting direct snap, but boy, the Cougars were ready for it. Rocco Griffin took that snap. Transfer from Vanderbilt. 
a published poet, also plays chess. Needed to make another move to get around that defensive swarm by the Cougars. Third down nine. Well, nice job staying at home on that one because, again, UTSA trying to create a little bit of misdirection. You get the offensive lineman moving in one way, run the ball the other way. Blake Robinson wasn't having it. Yeah, that was an official's timeout a moment ago, just so you're aware. Harris will go down at the 33-34 yard line. Malik Robinson making the play. The super senior closed in on Frank Harris. You see everybody fighting and getting away from blocks. Just because they're trying to block you doesn't mean you need to stay blocked. You see them violent use of the hands. The hands so important for that defensive line played. Not just the leverage, not just the acceleration, but how you use those hands to get free. Field goal try. 45 yards away. It's up and off the upright. No good. Wow. Boy, Take you can hear that sound. Couldn't hit it. <laughs> Two missed field goals in this game. You see another mouthpiece on the field. <laughs> Might be that's, the same one. That's the kind of game it's bad. We're still tied. <laughs> reached peak fall the dq fall blizzard menu snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie they're back plaid cardigan Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots they did it too much fall nah peak fall achieved dq happy tastes good life is full of surprises We're pregnant and big or small they often come when you least expect them so when life gives you lemons or lemonade, it's good to know that someone's got your back. Whatever ups and downs come your way, we'll get you the tools you need to tackle them. After all, we're built for the unexpected. Commerce Bank. Challenge accepted. Why is Aaron happy? Well, just days ago, his old wheels gave out. But he knew Carvana had his back. That's because Carvana had thousands of cars under $20,000. And with the new co-signer option, Aaron's folks were able to help him out with a new ride. No way. Yes way. With thousands of cars under $20,000 and our co-signer option, we'll drive you happy at Carvana. Here in Houston, it's been a uh, knock the mouth guard out kind of game. <laughs> that mouth guard is just, it's mocking you. It said, I'm going to make Chris Myers talk about me all game long. Well, no, that's the defensive players. You said, you're bragging about these offenses and these quarterbacks. They heard you. And, you know, this is our show, and it has been. Seven all, a fresh set of downs from their own 26-yard line. And handing off to Brandon Campbell, sophomore. Down the Smith, meanwhile, putting up some pretty good numbers in a, in a game that hasn't had the kind of scoring we thought. He did have his 20th career touchdown pass earlier in this game. Well, even though he's had a little bit of the time, just not really able to get many throws downfield. Now, a couple times we've seen the ball get to Manjack, but you really haven't had that stretch the field effect that you had with a guy like Tank Dell last year, who's also down there in Houston, but with the Texans. And actually at the game, pass is caught. Samuel Brown up to the 43. We'll get their spot back. Give credit to the 44-yard line, and that's a first down. You see Brown lined up on the outside, just a little stop route. If you're going to play that off coverage and allow those underneath throws, Donovan Smith knows where he wants to go before, gets that ball out there quickly, allows him to make the catch and do some damage with yards after. Donovan Smith is outperforming his counterpart. Frank Harris so far in this game. Tony Mathis has come in at running back. A little pitch back, and then it goes to Joseph Manjack. And a lot of running around for very little. Trey Moore making the big defensive play. You know, I hesitate. Is that a flag or a mouth? <laughs> I think that I one's just, really okay. a flag this Okay, time. thank you. <laughs> Robert Smith by official spotter with James Petralka. <laughs> and the officials are gathering. 
Yeah, that one had a little more girth to it. I think it was Kendrick definitely a flag this time. Second down. Okay, so there isn't a foul. They just did that, so we... <laughs> They're just messing with us, for I, sure. I, I think so. By the way, Man Jack, what a great name for a football player, right? Joseph Man Jack the fourth. You don't want to mess with him. <laughs> a touchdown catch in this game. It sounds like a 70s uh, investigator or something like yeah. that with Kojak, Walker, right? Texas Ranger, one of those guys. Yeah, they, they, oh, rely on me and you for 40-year-old <laughs> references. But <laughs> right? well, we can go Liam Neeson. He holds up no matter what. Smith to throw, and he's got it deep. Overthrown. The coverage was good back there on Joshua Cobbs. Back double coverage with Wisdom and Alexander. Well, and you don't want to do that. You're Donovan Smith. I know that you want to make a big play, but choose your opportunities wisely. Double coverage back there. It just, wasn't just there. You could just be wasting a drive, and now you have third and 11. Take the underneath throw. You have to play smarter. I know it's your first game in this offense. You want to make a big impression, but be smart. Well, and he's the son of a coach, DeAndre Smith, the running backs coach for the Colts. DeAndre played at Missouri State where he had his number one jersey retired. Donovan, of course, wearing one here. Extra pressure. He has a moment. He gets out of it. Smith is on the move. Donovan Smith to the 46-yard line of the Roadrunners. And Rashad Wisdom kept him from going further. It's a nice adjustment here when the pocket closed in on him. See that size? Now it's not a mouth guard. It's a knee pad that comes rolling <laughs> out on this one. People are just losing all kinds of well, things. That's a first game for the equipment managers too. They're getting hit hard. And one of the coaches said, "We we want it. We want a physical hit. There's going to be some missed tackles. And boy, we're seeing the hitting, and you're seeing some evidence of it." He got the first down on that scamper, and just to the line of scrimmage before being shoved back was Brandon Campbell. Right, Martavius French made the tackle, but he's hanging on to that left hamstring, back of that left leg, and again, don't want to speculate on what it might be. Martavius French, the injured player for the Cougars. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. No. This or that, this or that. You can do this, when you and you that. You can do this, when you and you that. You can do this, because everywhere is that. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, Colorado shocks the world as the Coach Prime era is officially underway. Meanwhile, Texas opens up the season as Big 12 favorites, and our Chris Peterson sounds off on conference realignment. Who's going where? You come back here for the half, Chris and Robert. Back to you. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. And that's Martavius French heading over to the sideline. Chris Peterson, a mild-mannered guy. If he's hot and bothered about all the realignment, <laughs> I'm tuning in for that. I'm because, definitely tuning in. I mean, in. it's like it's like a game show trying to match, you know, where who's going where and when that's going to happen oh. and the conferences that are. It's hard to believe. You, who would have thought this 10 years ago, even with Texas A&M leaving the SEC, or excuse me, leaving the Big 12. Incomplete for Stacy Sneed. It'll be a third down and 10. 444 remaining until halftime. Well, the coaching staff said it. You know, you can go through your practice and your summer camp, your training, you know what you have, but until the guys get out there and play a game, they don't have preseason games. They don't really even have full-scale scrimmages against opponents. Yeah, and that's a, that's really surprising. You would think that two coaching staffs would get together and just say, just like you do in high school, just like you do at the pro level, college, the only level where you don't really get live looks against another team before a regular season game. Yeah, high school has jamborees, blitzes on, and Smith is... 
Tried to get away, but too many road runners. And that'll bring up a fourth down in a punting situation. And defensive coordinator just left said, okay, we're not going to cover on the back end. We're going to bring a little pressure. Make sure he has no time to throw. And that's exactly what happens here. Bring more than they can block. Donovan Smith, although he can run, isn't the fleetest of foot, so can't escape that pressure. A lot of roadrunner helmets wrap him up. It will sail. Oh, he almost had a chance. It looks like it bounced up and hit him when he was on the move. 51-yard punt. C.J. Nelson is who the ball bounced into. Watch this as he was trying to get back there and down it. Took a sharp bounce right, oh. right, right <laughs> into the gut. <laughs> well, it may not, it may not have even been the gut on that one. But uh, yeah, that thing, you never know how those footballs are going to bounce. <laughs> Just definitely came up and hit him before he had a chance to react. And the punter's like, come on, man, I got a good bounce on that one. He was there. So a new rule this year, uh, Robert, college uh, football, where they're not, the, the clock, when you get the first down, they're not stopping it. They're going to continue to run it. And what it does is it's going to take away a few series, possibly, you know, so try to measure here a number of plays. Yeah, you look Maybe. at that, it's take, taking away about an average of three drives and 13 plays a game. Pretty been, been pretty consistent over the last week. Going forward, Barnes, yeah, now inside two minutes, it's back to normal. Where the clock will, of each half, it'll it'll stop, so you'll have some opportunities there. But beyond that, and we're nearing two minutes, so you'll, you'll notice the difference. But yeah, it'll, the coaches were saying there'd be three possessions a game. So you have to think about that when you get your hands on the ball. Looks like that might have been deflected, but Taiki Ogo Kellogg did hang on. Two timeouts for the Roadrunners, all three for the Texans. Nearing three and a half before the break. Not the kind of game we expected, given the history. Again, this is a fourth meeting between these two teams. Well, remember last year, though, it was a triple overtime game, so that one really started off a little bit slowly as well, so we're going to see things pick up as guys get a little bit more comfortable. They've handled the heat so far. What a heave. Fighting for it and making the catch. Joshua Cephas worked his way around the defensive back. And Hall got in. Well, it's Brian George who's going to be in the coverage. And this is one where Frank Harris says, you know what? I'm just going to let my guy go up and make a play on this football. And that's exactly what Joseph Cephas did right there. It looks like they may take another look at this one. But I think that he had control when he was on the ground. You have to control it to the ground as you're going to the ground. But I believe that he was far enough through the catch process once that ball was knocked out. Cephas at six foot three went up to grab it. And let's watch here. George digs in there. Looks like he's down from that angle. Don't see the ball until afterwards. This may be a better view. They're reviewing whether this is a catch or not on the field. They ruled catch. And Brian George does exactly what he's supposed to do. You're out of position like that. And you're just supposed to go up through the pocket, as they say, drive your hands between the hands of the wide receiver and try and knock that thing all the way down to the ground. Let's bring in our rules analyst, Dean Blandino, watching all. And Dean, how did you see this? You know, I've been listening to Robert. Every time we go to commercial, try to guess what song is playing. <laughs> well... And hey, so the issue here, the season, Ready, right? wait, wait, I'm going to give you a little, a little trivia. The issue here is the title of Janet Jackson's 1986 breakout <laughs> album. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Replay buzz, the officials on the field, prior to Houston calling timeout. Houston will have all three timeouts for the rest of the half. What Finish is the team. album, guys? What's the album? Yeah, what was Janet Jackson's 1986 breakout album? Same issue we just had on the review. Oh, you, G, Janet Jackson's breakout album in 1986. He's asking you. He's having trouble. R Robert's having trouble hearing you, Dean, for some reason. Uh, control. There you go. Control. That's control it. The, okay. And right. that could, was the I could, issue. I couldn't. I couldn't could, could hear the did question. Did he control the ball all the way to the ground? You got it, Robert. Uh, <laughs> you did it. All right. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do. There we go. Thirty-year-old references. I'm good at those too. Harris is in trouble. 
gets out of it to get rid of it. Thank you very much, Dane Blandino. We're going to do Hallmark movies for you next time. <laughs> but uh, so hit a buzzer when a cookie. Robert moves up one. Got, it, it, music is his category. And that's that's not a problem. It's always going to be my category, and if it's 30 years or older, even better. But the official referee, I should say, Luke Richmond, was very clear on the catch, and Houston still with three timeouts. And 2.50 before the half on second down 10. Not much running room for Barnes, and that's been the case after the adjustments. And that's going to be third down. Nelson Caesar again is having a terrific game. Extraordinary game up front for the Cougars. And he's one of those guys that's emerged as a leader. And that was something that Dana Holgerson was really happy about. A lot of leaders on that offensive and defensive line, but UTSA has done a decent job up front today. Pro scouts are watching Caesar, He's a team captain. He had an interception last year in this game. The snap to Barnes directly, and that didn't work. We've had two missed field goals in this game. And a touchdown each team, as you can see on the scoreboard here. And now when there is a first down, we we'll go back to the old rule of the clock will stop on a first down inside of two minutes of the half and toward the end of the game. Fourth down eight. Well, we've seen some unusual plays from UTSA. Third and 17, decide to run that ball, don't get any yards here, end up punting, and then on that third and 10 right there, try and get a few extra yards. Now they're going to go for it on fourth and eight. Yeah, well, field goals haven't been successful, so they'll have one timeout remaining. UTSA uses it. All right, so touchdown. It's a touchdown to Man Jack. Donovan Smith getting his first touchdown pass as a Cougar. And then Kavorian Barnes on a drive that was well executed by Frank Harris. Houston will be kicking off to start the second half. That's it. And we've had two missed field goals, one hit, hitting the upright. We've got a mouthpiece up here <laughs> many times. Mouth guard. we got knee pads flying. We've had a couple of guys <laughs> need to be helped off the field, but they did talk to us about that. that now they've changed their mind. And they're going to put it away. Houston has all three of their timeouts. That's Malik Fleming who had the 48 yard punt return to set up that first and only touchdown for the Cougars. Need eight. Lucas Dean standing near midfield and he is going to kick it away. So, fair catch call for playing in a defensive struggle. We talked about these two quarterbacks and Frank Harris, one of the more exciting players in college football, but boy, the defenses have taken control of this and turned it over, though. Yeah, they certainly have. And even though Donovan Smith and, and the Raiders, Texas Tech Red Raiders last year, were able to beat Houston in week two in double overtime after Houston had won in triple overtime the week before against UTSA. Donovan Smith had three interceptions in that game. So that's something that you have to watch for him. We saw some questionable decisions, only five of 11. You can't get impatient. You have to understand the nature of the game you're playing in and don't get anxious. And Smith completes going out of bounds. Matthew Golden finally with a catch in this game. He did have an earlier target but couldn't hold on. Brown has three catches, Manjack with two to lead Houston, and Manjack the touchdown. Cephas has five catches to lead the Road Rollers. Picked up eight. We haven't really seen the tight ends. Dana Holgerson talked about it, likes a lot of those guys. We'll see if we can get those tight ends some action here now. To the 25 yard line is Donovan Smith. Well, as you mentioned earlier, that clock stops briefly, but you still want to get up there and get as many plays as you can. You don't want to be too anxious. 
you don't want to take up too much time. He rifled that in to Matthew Golden, who's got his second grab of the game. Steps out of bounds. He's able to get that thing into Matthew Golden to watch Nick Troy Fortune react to this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that Cam Alexander? That's Cam Alexander on the other side. Ooh, he took a shot at that one. He was trying to knock that thing away, maybe go for the pick. But Donovan Smith, we talked about it. He plants that foot, delivers that ball. He's got some heat behind it. The ring on the field is a catch for first down. The previous play is on the further review. Booth review ruled a catch on the field. Well, it must be something with the feet on the sideline, or maybe he didn't have firm control of the ball. If that ball is bobbled, and then he takes a step out of bounds, would be an incomplete catch, and he does not have firm control there. That looks like that left foot, though, is down yeah. in bounds right there. You see the old rubber rooster tail fly up. All right, let's see what Dean has, if he can find some musical tie-in for you. Yeah, that uh, I can hear. With that one, <laughs> Dean Blandino, our rules analyst, watching closely. What we're looking at here, again, is control. Does he have firm control with a body part down in bounds? Initially, there's a little bit of a bobble, but he does regain that control, get firm grip and control. It was a couple of good looks, and it's the right foot that's actually down in bounds. Both feet come down in bounds. To me, this is a catch replay taking an extra look, but this this should stand. All right, thank you, Dean. And like one of your Hallmark movies, this will be a happy... <laughs> happy ending. All right, there you go. It's With a, a single kiss. Yes, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Dean's not a fish, I'm, I'm not kidding about that. He loves which I, he's not only a music guy like you. He loves uh, he loves Hallmark movies as well as uh, watching football and going over the rules. So it is a catch. They just wanted to make sure they got it right on the field. They supported it. And now 59 seconds. This is an important drive for the Cougars here with those those timeouts remaining all three. And you just wonder how much how comfortable either one of these teams are with trying any kind of a field goal but they gotta they gotta cover some real estate here in the remaining time they hope they even get close and now well, he breaks a tackle Stacy Sneed to get up to the 41. And they call timeout there Sneed from Arlington Charge timeout sophomore Houston it's the first of the half and Houston will use their first timeout, they'll have two remaining. So we showed you the touchdowns in the kicking game here. For Houston, Jack Martin. And this one hit the upright, Tate Sandell. One from 44 and one from 51. So they weren't exactly gimmies. That's why we have the score we have. Yeah, and remember, early in the season like this, we make this point again about no preseason for college, colleges, no live scrimmages, everything scripted. When you're in summer camp as a college player and as a play caller, everything's scripted. Let me see this from the defense. Let me see that. It's something completely different on game day with players that haven't been out there before. We talked about the new wide receivers coming up with what they do best. Second down five, Donovan Smith. And he'll be knocked out of bounds at the 40. Smith on the carry, Brown It'll bring up a third down with 45 seconds remaining in the half. Yeah, and it was Nick Booker Brown, number 16, who beats the right tackle. You need Jay, forces Donovan Smith out of the pocket. He gave a little bit of a dead leg there as he was trying to go out of bounds, but Ken Robinson able to get a little bit of piece of that foot and make the tackle. Top two goals of the Roadrunner defense coming in. Control that run, stuff that run, and then don't allow a big play. It's something 25 yards or more. Underneath the catch is made for a first down to the 47-yard line. Samuel Brown he is in Roadrunner territory. Donovan Smith 
understanding that concept right there. You have that stick underneath. Maybe you want to try and hit something downfield, but understand the down and distance situation of the game. Did it right there. Tries to dump it off, and he does. That's Stacy Sneed getting out of bounds. Smith up near 130 yards, 8 out of 14 so far in this game. And you go over these things in practice. This is what you do in the preseason, kind of make these things automatic. You want to go through those two-minute drills every single day. So when you get in live action in a game, you're not thinking about what you need to do. You just go out there and do it because you've repped it so many times in practice. Still need about 10 yards to be comfortable with field goal range, at least from what they told us what the kicker's view was coming into the game. And you see that false motion there, trying to get an indicator from the defense. How are they going to react? And Smith is brought down right at the 45. It's going to be third down. Clock. Let's see if they use a timeout. And they will. Houston will have one remaining. That was one where Smith maybe probably could have gotten rid of the ball just to. And we have another injured player. That's member of the UTSA defense. Trying to find trying to find out who it is. And I think it's Owen Peewee. Couldn't tell if that was 13 or 15. No, it is. Is it? Uh, Moore gets up. Moore gets up and gets off the field. Oh, 33. Not 13. Sophomore from Georgia. Heading over to the sideline as they check on him. It'll be a third down and eight. Well, this is the difficulty when you don't don't feel necessarily that you have a kicker that you can rely on maybe a little bit of a swirling wind. How aggressive do you get here on third and eight. The blitz is on the throw it's completed in field goal range is Samuel Brown and Samuel Brown is uh, look like he stepped out of bounds. You know, oh yeah. yeah. That left foot <laughs> waving him off. He made it look so casual. Yeah he certainly did but that left foot he makes a guy miss but that left foot goes out pretty clearly into the white. And maybe he knew it. Yeah, that right one on. there is out of bounds. That, that that's, yeah, the, that's the spot the official right there. Boy. Can that, be back at about the 22 yard line. So you're at least in what we would think would be field goal range. Well, 13 seconds gives you at least one shot at the end zone, though. From 20 yard line, you're going to have a shot at the end zone. You miss this one, but then you might want something a little bit shorter, guarantee getting three points or feel pretty good about it. And they pick up a few yards. Brandon Campbell hauls that in and a, kind of an outlet. Get him a little bit closer with eight seconds remaining. If they spot this at the 20, it's probably looking in the range of 37 to 40 yard field goal. Then you have an opportunity to take a shot over the middle here now with eight seconds and that timeout in your pocket. You can stop the clock for a field goal try, so you don't necessarily have to take a shot at the end zone, but you might want to try and isolate some receivers on the outside. Those guys are covered up. You don't feel good about the route or getting it out in time to get a field goal. Throw something underneath. Call timeout. He gets out of the rush. Loses. Oh, that's got to be a flag. The flag. Oh. He was clearly out of bounds, but got drilled. And it was Donye Taylor, the senior from Shider, Texas, with the hit. Boy, it just doesn't make any sense right there. You can take that extra shove, and I hear defensive players say it all the time. Hey, I take that big run. I want to get a hit. After the play. Personal foul, lay hit out of bounds. Defense, number seven. At the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Well, only three seconds, so fortunate there because it doesn't give them a shot 
to take another shot at the end zone. Probably just going to go with the field goal, but it was going to be a longer field goal because Donovan Smith was losing yardage on that one. Donye Taylor comes up and takes that senseless hit on Donovan Smith, tacks on all that yardage. Jack Martin to try from 31 officially after the penalty moved him up. Snap well handled. The kick. We have a field goal made. Texans. Here in Houston, wearing the Lovia Blue, the Cougars get three to end the half. 10 7 advantage. Let's go to Mike Hill and the crew for the halftime report. All right, Chris, welcome to the State Farm Halftime Show. I am Mike Hill, your L.A. CDO's S. Emmanuel Acho. That is the coach, Chris Peterson. 10-7, your score at the half. Second half coming up momentarily. But first, let's take you around the nation with our State Farm Halftime highlights, starting with the game of the day. That it was, a Mike. A lot of hype coming into this one. Yeah. Coach Prime making his coaching debut, taking on number 17, TCU, and it lived up to the billet. Buffalo's up 24-21 here, though. Chandler Morris picked off by, look at Travis Hunter. This was the play of the game. TCU had gone down the field 95 yards, was on the brink of scoring a touchdown. The number one player from two years ago, Travis Hunter, two-way player, makes a phenomenal interception. 134 snaps he played. He was phenomenal. Shador Sanders just as big. A school record 510 yards Woo. and four touchdowns. Dylan Edwards with four touchdowns. This, this might be my play of the game right there. There was, there was plays being made everywhere. Over a minute left, same score. Fourth and nine, Chandler Morris, last chance. Jared Wiley looking for the first down, can't get it. Coach Prime in his coaching debut with Colorado gets the job done 45 to 42. And this man played 134 yeah. snaps and still yeah. had energy in the locker room yeah. do that. Look yeah. at him. Look at him. Get it. Get That's how you right look now. before the show, Mike. Yeah, 118 total yards uh, receiving. Uh, coach Prime, his coach, Athens. I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. Because guess, guess what? These young men in there right now, they believe. Not all of them believed before. But right now, they came up one by one, twos by twos. Coach, we believe. Now they believe. Now Boulder believes. People in the front office, people, people in the building, the fans, the students. Now everybody want to believe. I'm good with that. We got room. Y'all better believe. I bet you better, you, be, you better believe what we're going to be next week. <laughs> Big new kickoff headed to Boulder. Hosting Nebraska, Colorado is Coach Prime's home debut. Cover starts at 10 a.m. Eastern next Saturday on Fox. Uh, they're sorry. Uh, first half, offensively, a little, a little jittery. Second half, they came to play defense, played all game. Is Texas football back? They better be, Mike. Mike and Rice. They got Alabama next week. We got highlights for you coming up. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu, snickerdoodle cookie dough, pumpkin pie, they're back. Cloud, cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Wow, you guys did great with this place. Yeah. And it was easy to buy with all the help we got from Navy Federal Credit Union. I can't imagine where we'd be without them. So what's shaking? Nothing. Nothing's shaking. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Give me my dirt theme music. It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time! It's time. Welcome back to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Go CP, Acho, and me hanging out with you. Michigan will not have Jim Harbaugh on the sidelines for the first three games of the season. This after a self-imposed university ban stemming from alleged allegations during the uh, COVID-19 dead period. Today, the second-ranked Wolverines hosted East Carolina. And J.J. McCarthy and the whole team showing support Freedom. for their coach. Free him. 
Free arm arm arm. But technically, they locked themselves up. It was self-imposed. <laughs> right? Self-imposed. They, self they probably still say it was a bunch of, you know, what? Uh, Jesse Mentor and the boys didn't need him. J.J. McCarthy was there. Roman Wilson uh, with the touchdown right there. McCarthy, 280 yards, three touchdowns, and the Michigan win. Ohio State, Kyle McCord, his turn at quarterback. Up and down game for him. He got benched and then put back into the game. Ohio State got the win, but life after C.J. Stroud could have been smoother to start. Yeah, McCord, 20-33, 239 yards, uh, one interception. They still got Mayan Williams in that two-headed monster backfield there. Three-yard touchdown. Ohio State does get the win, 23-2-3. Rice, Texas, on the Longhorns back. That should be John Robinson. They miss him. They could have used him in the first half. Texas's defense sustained him, though, Coach. A nice little big play right there. They'll get more of those next week against the Crimson Tide. You think uh, Quinn Ewers and Tavian Sanders right there, Texas roll, especially in the second half, 37 to 10. That is one more. Who is Texas? Texas is fine. Texas fine. Four seconds. So we Let me just this. say this. That doesn't look like Colorado's <laughs> locker room. I like Colorado's better. Yeah, a little, little bit more flavor in Colorado's locker room. Arkansas State, number 20, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Second year for Brent Venables. Looking good. Uh, they better look good. As bad as it looked last year for OU, this was the first time in a long time OU was not the Big 12 favorites, but boy, were they dominant in this game. They scored 73 points in this Woo! game against Arkansas in the shutout. Hey, Ole Miss, how many points would Ole Miss score against Mercer? Jackson Dart. My favorite name in college football but at, at the quarterback position. <laughs> <laughs> if your name is Jackson Dart, you better be able to throw him, right? Yeah, that's oh, kind that's of a dart yeah, right there. Yep. 20-yard touchdown, dart, 334 yards, four touchdowns. Ole Miss was 73 points in a 73-7 win. Uh, can Oregon top that? Mm. So we had 73 and 73. Uh, Bo Nix and the boys back against Portland State, and Nix finds Troy Franklin. <laughs> yeah. Two big-time players. Looks like there's a little bit of padding stats going on here this weekend, <laughs> fellas. 81. Well, that's a lot of push-ups. A right lot there. of push-ups. Right. You're going to have a strong mother right there. Tell him. Hey, the reigning Heisman winner already off to a great start for his second trophy. Highlights of Caleb Williams and the Trojans coming up. How about this name right here, Joseph Manjack? You like that name? I like it. Man I like Jack. it. Yeah. I'll take it. No, yeah, they'll take that touchdown right there. It's 7 right now, that. reached peak fall the dq fall blizzard menu snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie they're back cloud cardigan Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots they did it too much fall nah peak fall achieved dq happy tastes good you said close your eyes don't look down fall into me and I'll catch you, darling, we'll dance in the street Like nobody's watching, it's just you and me And the song of Celebrate every kiss Get zero down special financing with the K Jewelers credit card There's DNA, then there's heavy duty DNA H-DNA It's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. Toe hitches of the world prepare for glory. Welcome back to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Can Todd Wayne Georgia go back to back to back? <laughs> Carson Beck taking over for Stetson Bennett. Beck looking good. Makai Muse, 54 yard touchdown. Shifty, yeah. I like it. Georgia so far likes it. Looking good. 31-0 in the third quarter. How about Bama? What about questions there? Jalen Milrow. Uh, I, like, I like this. They're making something out of nothing. Showing a lot of poise right there for a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of starting experience. Well, he's got two rushing touchdowns so far. Alabama, 21-0. Of course, they got to replace Bryce Young there. West Virginia, number seven Penn State. A lot of expectations for Penn State this Dark year. Dark horse for the national championship. I mean, you got a guy in Drew Aller who's a top quarterback prospect. They have running backs. They have wide receivers. I think this team's up to some coach. Yeah. They get past Michigan and Ohio State <laughs> in their own division in the Big Ten. Nevada, number six USC. Of course, USC coming off a season opening win last week. There's Caleb Williams, your reigning Heisman Trophy winner. 
scrambling. Now watch this. Look, look. How about this arm strength right here? The scrambling ability, and this is all arm, guys. Whoop. Dark. Whoop. He's got it all. He's got it all. Trojans rolls at 42 to 7. Oh, guess what we got? We got the coach Pete Bow. Nope, I'm two. Switzerland. Is it Switzerland? <laughs> There's two former teams here at Boise State and Washington. And, uh, well, if, if Michael Pennis Jr. was on your team, would yeah. you be Switzerland then? You know, I'm back on. <laughs> <laughs> Pennix an absolute beast, man. He had four touchdowns and no interceptions in the first half alone. 450 passing yards and five touchdowns. Time now for one of my favorite subjects, uh, uh, topics, I should say. Coach Pete Pet Peas, it's only week one, but what's already bothering you, Coach? Yeah, you know I got something bothering me. And it, and it starts with this crazy conference realignment, which has led to the destruction of the Pac-12. To watch this great conference that's been around for more than 100 years implode and dissolve before our eyes not only upsets my stomach, but it hurts my heart. Oh, and it's obvious in the coming years, a group of football programs are going to break away and create a new model, and realignment will happen once again. But hopefully the next time we can create a system that is not only better for the game of football, but better for all of college sports. But for this season, let's be all in on the Pac-12. Mm -hmm. It's going to be epic. Yep. The conference is as deep as it's ever been. Yep. The mm -hmm. QB play is going to be spectacular. And the storylines will be awesome. Hello, Coach Prime. Oh, yeah. Mm. Coach Prime. So, I mean, you think about Let's it. enjoy this. Got to enjoy it. Everything. You got to appreciate the Pac-12. for. If this is the final season of that conference, this is a season to watch. No doubt about it. It is going to be fireworks. I truly believe that the Heisman Trophy winner comes out of the Pac-12. Just think about the Pac-12 quarterbacks alone today. Mm. 17 touchdowns, no interceptions cumulatively, and Caleb Williams is still playing mm -hmm. a football game. So if the Pac-12 and since the Pac-12 is ending, it's going to end in a bang. I mean, you got Washington, you got USC, you got Oregon. Yes, Oregon State is going to yep. be even better this year. Yep. Utah, of course, yep. they're defending Pac-12 no champions, won it back-to-back years. So it's a lot to watch for. And it's so ironic that this is the end of the conference with this Best year we've, you know, in a more long talent time. than we've seen in a long time. But we got to enjoy it while it's here. We got to enjoy it. All this realignment. UTSA moved conferences. They're, they're in a. I can't follow it. I can't tell you. It, uh, <laughs> CAA? No, USAA? What are they? Conference USA. No, it's not Conference USA. I know what Houston's in the Big 12. We're going to yeah. get it together. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll straighten them out. <laughs> Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. It was our first time in Kyoto. Oh yeah, it was a whole new thing for us. We stayed in a room in Takashi's home. We told Takashi that we wanted to go to a nice sushi restaurant. He was like, I can teach you. <laughs> I think that's where the sushi party started. It was so funny. You got pretty good at it. Yeah, I think I'm quite talented. <laughs> no matter where you're headed, with the right view, the right co-captains, stunning American design and craftsmanship. You might not care if you ever get back. Welcome you back to Houston 10 7. The Cougars with the Love You Blue salute to Houston football and the Oilers 
back in the day along with uh, Robert Smith, a former Ohio State running back. I'm Chris Fires. Thanks for hanging with us. Well, it's been a, a hard physical kind of hitting as the first half as the defense and the score would indicate. So we, we talked about Frank Harris being an explosive player here. Uh, what does he have to do and how do they UTSA make some adjustments here? They'll get the ball first to start the second half. Well, I think that's an interesting part it's about these early season games. You really have to see what you have from an offensive weapon perspective in live action before you can make the calls that you want to make. So if you're Burke, the offensive coordinator there for UTSA, you're looking at, okay, well, these guys were able to make those plays against this kind of defense, the style that we saw in the first half. But don't forget, defensive coordinator Doug Belt for Houston, he knows that a lot of times you change those looks, those defensive calls up in the second half to try and confuse things. So good luck, really. Yeah, the, <laughs> you never uh, really know. Total yards uh, similar. Uh, I mean, we have one field goal made out of three tries. And each quarterback has engineered a touchdown drive. Donovan Smith has, has played rather well. And we'll get a look as you look at the first half stats. We have not had a, a turnover so far. The announcers jink, jinx. <laughs> There's a slight, I would say, 50 mile per hour wind. That is one thing we we started the day. Obviously, the, the sun hadn't set yet in the upper 90s. See the little breeze kick it up, so it has cooled off a bit. Still in the 80s. As TDECU Stadium. So the rule is someone has to hold it. Now well, the Roadrunners are ready to roll here. Thanks for being with us. College football at FS1. UTSA and Houston. And on the return, it is Chris Carpenter. And he spins out a one tackle into another at the 15 yard line where Frank Harris and the offense will take over. Numbers on Harris 10 out of 18, 118 yards. He hasn't run as much as we thought. Most of it's been just avoiding the rush. Five rushes for 12 yards. The rhythm to this game has been awkward, but let's give the defenses credit. Devorian Barnes is the back. He has the touchdown run from the first half. Harris. Throw, low throw, and if they're ruling that a catch, it's Cephas leading receiver and a flag down as well. Five catches coming in for Cephas coming into this half. Eligible receiver downfield, offense, number 64, five yard penalty, first down. That's Delamaraz, the center from Los Angeles, called for the ineligible downfield. It really didn't seem like there was much of a reason to be downfield on that one. Sometimes you see the illegal lineman downfield when there's some sort of run option in the play. But it looked like straight rollout that time. He just got too far upfield. He keeps Frank Harris across the 30 and has a first down up near the 35 yard line. A great fake, and he's waving. He just hold his arms like, hey, was that necessary? I thought I was out of bounds. Boy, not the best job of ball protection on this one, but a good read here from Frank Harris. You see he rides Kavorian Barnes inside, pulls that ball, doesn't do an excellent job protecting him. He definitely got tackled out of bounds, and I'd love to hear what Dean Blandino would say about that. I yeah, mean, that. you get that far out, and it's pretty clear he takes him down. He's got to know he's out, of, he's out of bounds. Once you start going by the legs of people standing on the sideline, that should have been a penalty, and... Yes, Dean Blandino agrees with my humble opinion that it should have been a penalty. And getting rid of it is Harris, but that was his best run of the day. And that's what they're going to need more of. The Roadrunners are going to need more of Frank Harris being Frank Harris. Seventh season of college football. An exciting player is going to have to be, and maybe part of it is the running lanes that aren't there because of the... Houston defense, but he's going to have to get out and move around or create some things for this offense. Second and ten. Barnes. And Barnes 
is loose straight up field. Kavorian Barnes all the way down to the 20-yard line of Houston. Isaiah Hamilton may have saved him from going the distance. A run of 44 yards. Boy, it's so tough when you get the ball in a situation like this. Running backs, you just want to just go and go and go, but you have to be patient, especially when there's a pour. And he had to pour in front of him on that. Nice and patient run. Good call, getting a lead, blocking lineman in front of him. Yeah, his career long is 53 yards. That 44-yard run to the 21. And this time, Harris will keep and pick up a couple before he goes out of bounds. Conference USA Freshman of the Year last year is that run again. We talked about getting those pullers in front, and it's Walker Beatty, that left tackle, who was a defensive tackle a year ago that pulls around, gets a hat on a hat. You always said to your offensive lineman, don't worry about position blocking. I don't care what side your helmet's on. Just hit the guy. I'll do the rest. Whistle. And a flag on second down seven. All start. Offense. Number 58. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Total back him up a little bit. Barnes a dozen carries at 94 yards. He's averaging almost eight yards a carry last year when he was the freshman of the year in the conference. He was averaging just over six a carry. You see his numbers. And he remains in the game for Frank Harris. Harris the second leading rusher for the Roadrunners. Back to the 23-yard line at second and 12. Barnes has nowhere to go. Excellent defense up front by the Cougars. It'll bring up third down and long. Well, I like the way he runs, though. And Kavorian Barnes, one of those guys, didn't play much at the beginning of the season. Only had like six yards, six carries for 20 yards through the first five games a year ago. Then had a big performance, 825 in the last eight games. And on that last play, even though it wasn't blocked very well, he got about as much as he could, getting vertical as soon as he could. Third and 11. Harris has a moment, throws. And it's intercepted, going to the turf on a low throw. A takeaway for the Houston Cougars defense. It's the first turnover of this game. Traylon Payne comes up with the pick. A scoring opportunity thwarted as the Houston Cougar defense inflicts pain. Drop the bomb. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. Honey, have you seen my cell phone? But don't just imagine. My park came to life? Ooh, a plot twist. Use STEM to build. Ta -da! Create. She did it. And change the world. Who's with me? I'm more of a two feet on the ground kind of guy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's gonna hurt tomorrow. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Well, Frank Harris should know this, that if you stare down wide receivers, you're going to be staring at guys picking your ball off more times than not, especially when you have a linebacker like Traylon Payne here who's watching Frank Harris's eyes the entire time. That is the way that you play zone defense. Don't break too early. Let that quarterback, you bait him into that throw. Let him think that receiver's open, break in front, make the pick. Pass is complete. Donovan Smith to Samuel Brown, who's trying to shake a tackle, and he's over with a sixth catch. Over 100 yards in this game and averaging more than 20 a catch. That drive, by the way, they had moved 62 yards, the Roadrunners, before the interception. The first turnover or takeaway in this game by the Houston defense by either team, as a matter of fact, as Payne came up with the pick. Traylon Payne, by the way, from the 2-1-0, San Antonio Judson High School, the sophomore, with a big defensive play. Pass he has caught. That's Matthew Golden. 
And Smith into a rhythm now. And you can see the acceleration from Golden. Donovan Smith gets the ball to him quickly. Extended handoff, getting that ball out there. You see the acceleration breaking to the inside. You got a defender down. Looks like Ken Robinson. Looks like he's uh, cramping potentially. They're lifting that leg up and stretching. You see Golden lined up on the outside. Little stop. He had a lot of cushion on that one. Nick Troy Fortune gave him plenty of room, and he converted that into a nice game. All right, we'll check on the injury on Ken Robinson. 10-7 game in Houston with the football. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. No one can take better care of your child than you can. But when they start getting into everything, you may need a little help. So Duracell created the only lithium coin batteries with a non-toxic bitter coating to help discourage swallowing. Making safety simple and giving you more peace of mind. Take on the day. With Taltz, up to 90% of patients saw a significant improvement of their psoriasis plaques. Some even saw 100% clear skin. And for those with psoriatic arthritis, Taltz reduces joint pain and stiffness. Don't use if you are allergic to Taltz. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. Increased risk of infections and lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about infections, symptoms, or if inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop worsen or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Ask your doctor about Taltz. Senior Ken Robinson is up and over on the sideline. He was the injured player. See the fan behind him. And moments ago in that timeout, you don't see this very often. The two head coaches coming out to midfield said something briefly to each other. Well, they may just been talking about the common rehydration issues they both have. Passes incomplete by Smith. <laughs> Trying to get it to Golden. How about Donovan Smith on that play? Nick Troy Fortune is running right at him full speed. Absolutely no panic. He just knows, hey, I got to get this ball out. Excuse me, that was Trey Moore on that one. Oh, no, that was Nick Troy Fortune. Trey Moore got in there after and got in his face. But Donovan Smith, no panic at all. He said, I got to deliver this football. I'm not worried about it. Nice subtle move to the side to get out of his way. Second and ten. Excellent defense by the Roadrunners. It'll bring up third down. Trey Moore again on the play. More vocal this year, according to some of his coaches. And some of the staff wasn't exactly excited. to. to he's from San Antonio. They weren't exactly excited to have him there. And then... The head coach said, no, he's going to be here. And, and, said, okay. <laughs> and, 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 he said he could, and he said he couldn't have been happier, yeah. too. Jeff Trailer was right. I was wrong. We needed to be after this guy. What a player. Smith sideline off the hands, and it's going to be fourth down. Golden was again the target. Some frustration there with those two hooking up. But not on the side of Samuel Brown, who's had a big game with six catches. Yeah, and so often the inaccuracy of a quarterback stems from footwork. Donovan Smith knows that he's been working on that. And he is so effortless with, with his movement in the pocket. But that time slides just a little bit. Doesn't quite get the feet set to his target line. And a little inaccurate with the throw. Chris Carpenter. As that will roll inside the 20 year big music guy. I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan and the great musician who made the beach, and the parrot heads, and the ocean a lot of fun passing away. May he rest in peace. This one's for you. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu, snickerdoodle cookie dough, pumpkin pie. They're back. Plaid, cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good.
When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis takes you off course, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When I wanted to see results fast, Rinvoke delivered rapid symptom relief and helped leave bathroom urgency behind. Check. When UC tried to slow me down, I got lasting steroid-free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC caused damage, Rinvoke came through by visibly repairing my colon lining. Check. Rapid symptom relief. Lasting steroid-free remission. And a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how Abvi can help you save. Fox College football at FS1, sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. It's a toss-up game. It's in the balance. Three-point difference here in the third quarter. Robert Smith, Chris Myers in Houston, and Frank Harris, who his offensive coordinator said, Justin Burke, he has a magic about him. He changes the room. We're giving him more control of the offense. And so far, he has not been able to handle the defense of Houston. But a bounce back after throwing a pick. And firing toward the sideline, and that may be another pick. I was just going to to grab it, Malik Fleming. I was just going to say, you know, all that experience, and we saw the interception the last time, staring down his wide receiver. Do not panic. Understand the situation in a game. We, under, we know you want to take a shot. We know that you want to ignite your team, but you have to be smart about it. If you're going to give your receiver an opportunity to go up and get a ball like that, make sure that the placement is where he can get it or nobody get it. And there you can see Fleming able to make the interception. The senior for the Cougars back to back. Takeaways, interceptions by this Houston defense. And Fleming is on the Paul Horning watch list. It's a seventh career interception. Great field position here. Chance to add to the narrow lead. Stacy Sneed with a good move inside the 40. And Sneed to the 35 before being run out of bounds. And this is exactly what you need. Sometimes it's BYOB, be your own blocker. If you're a running back, we're going to get you to the second level. you got to make somebody miss back there. And that's exactly what Sneed does. Spins, protects the football, gets to the sideline. That one probably should have been a flag, too. Really gets pretty close there to the sideline. Pays for the gain, but does a nice job getting it up and through. Sneed, last year's top rusher for the Cougars, his fourth season in the program. Brandon Campbell is in after that 17-yard pickup. Inside the 35 of the Roadrunners. Now to the 35 is Campbell. Donovan Smith playing a smarter game, a more cautious, careful, controlled game. And that's part of the run game, too. Remember, we're talking about fewer possessions in game, fewer plays in game. Crank up that run game a little bit. Kill some time as you get down and try and score. That was a nice throw, but right on it. And a tackle made to Joshua Cobbs, Cam Alexander. Fastest player on that defense for UTSA. Making the tackle. Smith played as a transfer from Texas Tech, as you mentioned, played 21 games there in three seasons. He's already been a Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week. Had a big game in an overtime win against Texas. Not putting up big numbers, but has the lead and has control of this game at the moment. Third down, two. Smith is throwing. Incomplete. Coverage good downfield, and it'll be fourth down. And I would guess here that they're going to go for it, but the field goal, if they were going to go in that direction, would be in the neighborhood of 40, 42 <laughs> yards. Yeah, you can see they're running the field goal unit out there, changed their mind halfway through. Oh, no, they're going back. No, they are. They're going to go for it. 
They, they ran the kicking unit out there, then ran those guys back. And now, as, as you mentioned, and Dana Holgerson said to us, had analytics department evaluating the program and their history of calls, said they needed to go more on fourth down. We'll see how it works out here. Smith has time, pressure's coming, and he's going to be sacked. Trey Moore closed in on him, and that's a big defensive play when the Roadrunners needed it the most. And it's Donye Taylor. He's going to he's going to come from the right side of the screen on this one. He's going to be coming out out of this direction, and he's going to come free. Now, a quarterback has to understand where are my problem areas, and if this guy doesn't get blocked, what am I going to do? Now, he can feel the pressure. He starts to escape, but you have to understand. You have to get on your horse a little bit earlier on that one. You don't have that kind of juice, my man. You don't accelerate like that, especially running to your left. As a right-handed quarterback, you have to know where that pressure is going to come from, anticipate it, get out of there early, and at least give yourself an opportunity to get those shoulders turned and drive that ball upfield. Yeah, another big defensive stop for Jeff Trailer in the defense. They had a, a fourth down stop and short earlier. And this time it was fourth and two. It's just interesting that they were throwing Houston was throwing deep in that situation as Rocco Griffin carries for the Roadrunners. And you wonder what's going through Frank Harris's mind, all the experience, and this is his final season in a game to start 2023 where he just has not been in a groove. And that's another pick, his third interception throw, the second takeaway for Malik Fleming. Unbelievable. And this is about calls on the defensive side. Defensive coordinator Doug Belt. Remember that name. He is that guy that's going to be a head coach at some point. You have a defender on the backside that's sitting at home in the flat waiting for this exact type of throw. But he's going to be coming from the outside, not from the inside. And when Frank Harris rolls out, all he's doing is watching his receiver. You have to understand in the direction that you are rolling out, defenders can fall back into that throw. Just because nobody's trailing it doesn't mean that there isn't a defender in front of it. You have to look in front of those throws on boots like that. Three interceptions in the game. Campbell carries. And when I see those uniforms and I say Campbell, you know, I'm thinking of Earl Campbell. Oh, and, and, that, the, and that tearaway jersey. Man. Yes, and love you blue. And a tribute. To Tyler Rose, baby. To and the and city Gilmer's, of not, Gilmer's not too far from Tyler. A little bit banged up there. It's like Robert Henry. That is not Earl Campbell, but he's got the jersey there. Not sure if it's a tear away or not. There's another Earl Campbell jersey. That's definitely not Earl Campbell. We'll check. And the injured member of the Roadrunners. 10-7 game at the moment. And frustration for UTSA in the opener here in Houston. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. I have moderate to severe Crohn's disease. Now they're sky rizzy. Up, Feel significant symptom relief with sky rizzy, including less abdominal pain and fewer bowel movements at four weeks. Sky rizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor for Crohn's that can deliver both clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. The majority of people on SkyRizzy achieve long-lasting remission at one year. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to.
Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Ask your gastroenterologist how you can take control of your Crohn's with Sky Rizzi. Learn how Abby could help you save. Dewan Griffin up and moving to senior from New Orleans, who was the injured player for UTSA. Stacy Sneed is the back on second down six from the 31 yard line of the Roadrunners. And no running room for the Cougars. Well, they weren't trying to fool anybody on that line up in that tight formation. You mentioned Tyler a moment ago, Robert. That's uh, Jamal Ligon, who's from Tyler, Texas, with the Lee High School, the senior. The defensive effort for both of these teams, and boy, I mean, Houston has three sacks and three interceptions, and the UTSA defense has had to try to protect after the ball is turned over the turf it's only a three-point deficit yeah, quick change situations that's a stress around defenses but just go out there and play hard trying to get the ball back Cougars trying to get more that won't be enough for the first down Banjack who has the touchdown reception tackled right away by Cam Alexander and it's fourth down now they've gone a couple of times fourth and one fourth and two and have failed it looks like they're going to be going for, going for the field goal on this. Try to create Jack Martin will come out. 38 yarder from that left hash. Martin has made from 31. He missed, missed wide right from 51. And this will be 45 yards away for a six point Houston lead. There's a, looks like. Something went flying, a flag down. I it wasn't a mouth. It was the, a mouth the kick is good. Let's check the flag. Well, they didn't stop the play, so you're you're guessing that it's not a false start. This one may have been offside. It's going to be declined. You see the kicking unit running off of the field, so I think this one's going to stand. You know, early season for the refs. Real formation. Defense. Defense. Number three was lined up under the snapper. It's a five-yard five penalty, penalty, which results in a first down. Woo. Well, take points off the board. Is that what they're going to do? <laughs> they're going to get the get the first down. Yeah, five and will he's give them the that first. center covered up, which you're not allowed to do. So only fourth and two. Jack Martin is probably saying, well, okay, I understand, but remember I made that one. If you all point to the, the one that... Boy, that and you, you just hate to see that. All that effort on defense to get them into a fourth down situation and then just a simple alignment error like that. And that's something that you see, once again, early in a season. Puts the ball at the 22. Under pressure and incomplete. Logan Compton was the tight end in the area. The blue collar try harder tight end from Tumble High School. Boy, he took a Smith took a tough hit. <laughs> oh, and he's going to get pursued on this one. I really like this call. You get the rollout action to the right, and you try and get the throw back all the way to the left to your tight end. But Alexander in hot pursuit the entire time, just barely able to get that thing off. Good thing he's. Built like Ben Roethlisberger used to be, six foot five, two hundred and forty pounds. Smith has a moment, fires, and the juggling catch is made by Joseph Manjack the fourth. That's a nice throw. Nice throw and a nice catch eventually by Manjack. The catch so nice, he had to make it twice. You see that thing <laughs> pop up into the air. You see them all fired up the touchdown early in the game. Donovan Smith throws a strike over the middle. Man Jack finally brings that in. Fourth catch of the game for him. He had the touchdown of the first half. It's first and goal Cougars. Smith backpedaling. Gets rid of that. 
The pressure was on from the Roadrunners. By the way, a crowd of 37,800 plus. That's more than 7,000 than last year's biggest crowd. I know that Adel Horgerson was hoping for a big turnout here. Fans have withstood the earlier heat and are enjoying a defensive battle to start the 2023 season. Yeah, and defensive coordinator Jess Lepp, he brings the pressure once again. And every time you bring pressure, you expose yourself on the back end. And to me, that says Houston does not have the receivers that scared me one to one. We can cover those guys up in man. Comes a flag that was golden in motion. Flyer to the play clock. Expiring. Charge timeout. Houston. It's be a first and a half. Get 30 second right. timeout. Pick up the flag. Houston charged a timeout. Okay, next Saturday on Fox, Deion Sanders' is home debut. Colorado against Nebraska. Big noon Saturday showdown. Later in primetime, number 15, Oregon, takes on Texas Tech, followed by Stanford, USC, Heisman Trophy winner last year, Caleb Williams. So next Saturday on Fox and also on the Fox Sports app. Well, it, you got the impression with all the hype that it was Deion Sanders out there playing. <laughs> Instead, it was his son, and he came up big. Boy, he came up big. But what about Travis Hunter? He played 129 snaps in this game. Played wide receiver, played cornerback, 11 catches in the game, a huge interception. Not taking anything away from Shadur. But my man, Travis Hunter, playing in that same 100-degree heat, probably even hotter because it was up there at TCU. This incredible performance. Yeah, a lot of points in that game. It was a fun one to watch. Meanwhile, here it's about the defense at a 10-7 second and goal situation. Cougars trying to add to their lead. Smith floating one for the end zone. And Matthew Golden has a Houston Cougar touchdown. Nick Troy Fortune had the misfortune of trying to cover Matthew Golden. <laughs> well, Jess Lepp said, I'm going to leave those guys on an island out there. And that's what happens sometimes when you get compressed like that, meaning you don't have a lot of room on the back end. Sometimes, hey, it's man to man. Cornerbacks know it. I'm going to be in on, a, on an island. I have to be able to cover. But what you saw was Donovan Smith with a nice back shoulder throw. And they say, there's no defense against the perfectly thrown ball. That's what we saw. Well, his coach said he knows he's the guy right now, and he's comfortable with it. He threw this like he's the guy. Yeah, and you see that defender get on the high shoulder. You throw the back shoulder underneath, and that's just difficult to cover right there. I mean, it, the timing of it, you just don't know. You don't know when you can get back on that one, but that's a choice that the defenders have to make. If they take that underneath position, quarterback's going to throw it high into the corner. It comes down to timing and placement of the ball, and if that defender gets too high, they throw the back shoulder, but it has to be repped time and time again, and that's why you do it, because when you get in the game, it's automatic. This is where the ball is going to be. Matthew Golden knew it, turned at the proper time, and converted. Well, they took advantage. Remember, there was three on the board. The defense had done its job, but then a penalty allowed a first down. And taking advantage, the Houston Cougars get the touchdown toss, and now it's a 10-point difference. Six penalties against the Roadrunners. That last one hurt big time. Only one called against Houston. And for Golden, that's his eighth career touchdown in just his 12th game. Boy, they could trot out receivers in Houston, even with Tank Dell now in the NFL with the Texans. A fair catch called for. Dropped it, but it'll come out to the 25-yard line. 
Well, Frank Harris, I mean, he came out of the half. He was 0 for 4 with three picks. Yeah, and just unwise throws. Stares down a receiver on the first one, intercepted. Then he wants to take a chance to the outside, but he places it high when that was the position that Fleming was in. Fleming, once again, sitting in the flat on the front side of that rollout attempt. Frank Harris, hey, the quarterback position, though, you know what? The most important play is the next one. Don't worry about what happened in the past. Yeah, and to the ruling on that fair catch, because it was a muff, he did not complete the catch, so he doesn't get it out to the 25. It's going to be back at the three-yard line. So the miscues continue here for the road runners. Robert Henry is now in it running back. And he gets the football and gets across the five. So let's go back on the return. Called for the fair catch. That's Carpenter. Bobbles it, kneels, but at that point, it's a muff. And if it was a clean catch, it would have come out to the 25 once it hit the ground. This is Henry. And he may have dug them out of the hole with the first down run there. Well, that's huge. You can only play this game one play at a time. That next play has got to be your best play and the only thing that you think about. Now we'll see if Frank Harris can make some big plays in the pass game. Going up tempo. This is a run up the middle with Robert Henry, the junior. And when they went up tempo in the first half, that's when Frank Harris seemed to, as if he was at his best. Nelson Caesar slow to get up. He's had an extraordinary game, as has this Houston defense. So one of the more entertaining players in college football, Frank Harris has had a rough second half. And that's how it's gone in the last three possessions for the Roadrunners quarterback. And I don't want to take anything away from the Houston defense, especially Traylon Payne, who made an excellent interception reading the eyes of Frank Harris. But those are all mistakes that didn't need to happen. Unforced errors. Barnes slips away. Frank Harris on the fake and a missed handoff. It looks like Harris kept it for Barnes when Barnes was in the grass. How close this comes. <laughs> well, he just pulled that thing out. I mean, he's reading, yeah. on, he's reading on that play. That's dangerous because Mack was in a position basically to take the handoff himself. But Frank Harris is putting that thing in there and then pulling it out based on the read. Third and nine. They've been in a lot of these situations. Quick pass. Short of the first down at the 30. And that's Cephas with the catch. And who made the tackle on that play? Our man Malik Fleming, who picked off Frank Harris a couple times. Maybe Frank Harris said, hey, i got to build my confidence up and go with the guy that's picked me off a couple of times, and now they're going to go for it on fourth and two. I mean, inside their own 30-yard line, you have to believe it. Or that you're trying to pull him offside with the, with the snap count. He dumps it off. Oscar Cardenas has the first down, hitting his tight end on the fake. Well, they like to do this. They get him in what's called that sniffer position. That tight end lines up in the backfield and then comes across the formation because you get a big tight end, you get a fullback lined up in a position like that. Everybody's thinking run, then you bring him back across the formation. Pass complete. That's Tyke Ogle Kellogg. But what a brazen, gutsy. Gamble down 10 in the third quarter. If you miss on that fourth down try, you could get buried. We have another player slow getting up for Houston. Hey, <laughs> you got to practice what you preach, right? I mean, triangle of toughness. Said nothing ventured, nothing gained. We're fourth and two. We're down 17 7. There are mistakes we didn't need to make. And Jeff Trailer says to Justin Burke, the offensive coordinator, hey, Give me your best call. Well, it worked out from their own 44. Third quarter.
time running out. A little hesitation, and that looked awkward. Barnes had nowhere to go. Barnes had a good game, averaging over seven a carry and a touchdown, but there just wasn't much off that handoff. As we wind down the third quarter in Houston. The Cougars with a 17-7 lead. Their defense dominating the second half. And the offense putting up enough to have them in control of this. As we head to the fourth quarter, you're watching college football on FS1. Sounds like Motorhead. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ Fall Blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Cloud. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. If you have moderate to severe Crohn's disease, SkyRizzy is the first and only IL-23 inhibitor that can deliver clinical remission and endoscopic improvement. Serious allergic reactions and an increased risk of infections or a lower ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, had a vaccine or plan to. Liver problems may occur in Crohn's disease. Control of Crohn's means everything to me. Ask your gastroenterologist about SkyRizzy. Learn how AbbVie could help you save. There's DNA, then there's heavy duty DNA, HDNA. It's what every GMC Sierra HD driver is born with, and it's engineered into every aspect of the GMC Sierra HD with the pulling power to prove it. The new 2024 GMC Sierra HD. Tow hitches of the world, prepare for glory. Fox College football on FS1 is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. Harris in the third quarter, three of seven with three interceptions. Down 10 to start the fourth with Robert Smith. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being with us. It's an all-Texas thing, and the Cougars have had the best of it. It's been an extraordinary defensive effort by both teams, but the takeaways by Houston have made Frank Harris and the Roadrunners a tough team here in the fourth as they're going to have to play catch up. Boy, and Frank Harris had what he wanted on that one. You had man-to-man -man coverage on the outside and just doesn't step into the throw. Wonder how much he misses DeCorey and Clark. JT Clark is known to the team. Where's and they're missing Franklin, their top receiver from a year ago as well, who transferred to Old Miss. He does have Cephas with six catches in the game. The punt into the end zone, and Houston will take over on offense, protecting a 10-point lead. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ Fall Blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvoke. Rinvoke is not a steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvoke saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Rinvoke relief. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Rinvoke. Learn how Abby can help you save.
Yeah, we mentioned the Cougars, Houston wearing special uniforms reminiscent of the old Houston Oilers. They were in the city from 1960 to 96 before moving on to Tennessee, becoming the Titans. And linebacker Lamar Latham of Houston, the Oilers' first round draft pick in 1990. So a Houston player playing for the Houston Oilers. And holding up with success as Smith keeps and goes out of bounds. The Cougars, one of five schools with 20-plus wins and a pair of bowl wins in the last couple of seasons that put Alabama, Georgia, Air Force, Fresno State in that in that same group. And last year, Houston went eight and five. Cougars are five and three in one-score games. They played in three overtime games last year. And they won five games in which they trailed in the fourth quarter. But here, they have led after a seven-all tie. And adding to it in the second half. Smith airing it out deep and in the flags. There it is. Joshua Cobbs, the receiver who the ball was intended for, and the coverage a little too much. From Nick Troy Fortune, and he gets in that trail position, and what happens a lot of times. Defensive backs are taught not to look back for the football if you get Pass out of phase. Defense, number four, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. You're taught not to look back to the football. Just use all of your effort to try and catch up with the receiver. Watch his eyes and hands and then play the football. But when that ball's underthrown in a situation like that, what happens is that defender doesn't know that the wide receiver is slowing down. They don't have tail lights, and so he just runs right into him. Seventh penalty on the road runners. 15 yard pickup. Smith, sideline throw. And the catch made, he rifled that one. Stefan Johnson, the sophomore, making the grab. Smith over 200 yards passing in this game. He's run for 28 yards. And straight ahead is Tony Mathis Jr. All the way down to the 36 of the Roadrunners. Dangerous time here for the UTSA defense. You do not want to get demoralized and start giving up this chunk yardage. You played so well defensively today, but you're frustrated because the offense has put you on a short field so many times and they just aren't holding up their end of the bargain. You've been on the field too much, getting a little bit tired. You got to take those extra steps, close those gaps off, and stop this run game. 21-yard run for Tony Mathis, junior from Orlando, Florida. Smith's throw and wide open. Manjack. Manjack! Stumbles out of bounds. We had a chance to get into the end zone. Inside the five-yard line. And there's a flag down. That may be a dead ball foul. You can just see him sitting in the slot there. Nobody covering him said, okay, we're going to pop it to you, give you a chance to make something happen. And you can see him tight roping up the sideline. Get a couple high head nods there. Holding. Offense. Number 18. 10-yard penalty. Spot of foul. First down. The call was on Joshua Cobbs. Certainly was a good looking play either way. Well, you get a lot, you get that yardage pulled back. See but you see it. Well, he's on the outside. It looks like he just buries his guy. <laughs> I, ooh. I mean, the arm gets over his back. Yeah, it just, whew, I don't know what Dean would say about that one, but I guess by the letter of the law, maybe. It looks like he just dominated and threw him down to the ground. Doesn't look like a hole to me. Smith has a lot of time and a hit well-timed and incomplete. Cam Alexander with a big defensive play on Cobbs, who had the penalty a moment ago. But Alexander, terrific timing on that. And it's now second and 13. Boy, you get you get that ball back to those safeties. You gotta be careful about throws like that. You called it. 
Alexander timing that thing up perfectly, reading the eyes of Donovan Smith and separating ball from receiver. From the 40, Smith completes but knocked down. Zephyr Johnson again. It'll bring up a third down and a chance for the Roadrunners to put the stops on this and get the ball back. 12 minutes and counting in this fourth quarter. Remember these two teams played to a triple overtime last year. A high scoring game. This quite the opposite. <laughs> Last year, when that game was tied up, or I'm, I'm sorry, when UTSA was down three points, Frank Harris took over that offense with about 20 second seconds, no timeouts left. This thing is far from over. Don't touch that down. They get the stop. Stacey Sneed had little running room, but it is fourth down. If Nick Booker Brown, junior. Transfer from NC State, credit for making that play. Each team has more than 300 yards of total offense. And Chris Carpenter last year had the very first UTSA kick return for a touchdown. Be nice to get a big return here. The punt is down. Well orchestrated around the six yard line. The Roadrunners will take over, trailing by 10. Insane in the brain. Who's reached peak fall? The DQ fall blizzard menu? Snickerdoodle cookie dough pumpkin pie? They're back. Plaid. Cardigan. Ooh, all that and fuzzy boots. They did it. Too much fall? Nah, peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. So yeah, USAA, they always have my back. USAA? You were in the military? Oh no, I wasn't, but my grandpa was. He joined USAA, passed membership to my mom, then to me. There's other ways to get in? Yeah, my neighbor Ron, he's in, cause his wife served. Even little Luna, once she's born, her dad served. So all this time I could have had USAA insurance. And banking. Where's my phone? <laughs> Over there. USAA, for the military community and their families. Become an auntie, book a flight, stay four nights, meet the baby, make the baby cry, give the baby back, fly home. Silver tier in a single trip, join one key and move up tiers fast. Our Good Hands Playmaker, sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands in the hands of the Houston Cougar defense. Trail in pain with the first of three interceptions followed by a pair from Malik Fleming. Yeah, and Frank Harris knows that he's not supposed to make some of those throws, but you can't do anything about that. Most important play, next one. Just worry about what you can do to help your team get back in this thing. Quick pass, not much on the sideline. Kavorian Barnes has had a good day running the football, trying to get it to him on a toss. And the Cougar defense looking like the Oiler defense back in the day. <laughs> Only seven back points allowed. Look at that. We mentioned the takeaways. There's been a three sacks and on third down. Nothing for the Roadrunners. A very little. Two out of ten. And they may have another third down here coming up with Barnes carrying. Yeah, but you're right about that about that Houston defense. And we talked about the way that Dana Holgerson accomplished that, bringing in a lot of new faces, especially back in the secondary. And not all of those guys, power five guys. Can he get the first down, lunging across the 20? And that was Joshua Cephas with enough for the first down, his seventh catch of the game. Yeah, and you really don't have much choice if you're UTSA right now. You feel that you need to be able to take advantage of those underneath throws. Looks like got a lineman down. Looks like it's Makai Hart, that right tackle. Yeah, and he's the he's the oldest player, 24 years old. He's three months older than than Frank Harris, the quarterback, and he 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 got. Remember, the coach telling us he's the meanest, toughest guy out there when he takes it down the field. We hope he's okay because he had a a knee injury and then he tried to come back and then the other knee got hurt, and that's good to see him up and moving around. Fifth year senior. 
uh, you, you love you love to see that, and you're right. You know, the offensive linemen, they're just so tough to find. you got to find somebody big, find somebody that can move, find somebody that's smart, but most importantly, you got to find somebody that's just mean, and that's exactly what they said about Makai Hart. They said he's just angry at the world, which is a great way to describe it. Many can relate these days. <laughs> Long way to go for the Roadrunners who need some points soon. The clock for under 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Second down, five. See if Cardenas, the big tight end, is going to do something here. Oh, go with the run game. It's Barnes. And, boy, he was running well early. There's not a lot of room. Right around 100 yards, but the yards per carry have gone down quite a bit. He does have the touchdown run. The only scoring in this game for UTSA. Well, Frank Clark, or excuse me, Frank Harris has not demonstrated his ability to complete passes beyond the intermediate range in this game. His throws downfield, one of those was picked off by Malik Fleming. They're able to get those defenders up close to the line of scrimmage, get extra people in the box now to be able to stop that run, but now they have Kabor Kaborian Barnes lined up out wide. They need two. Can he get the first? The throw is caught, leaping in the air and falling with the first down catches. Houston Thomas, the freshman tight end from College Station. And I love this. Just when everybody in the world, maybe us, who are writing off Frank Harris, he says, you know what? I'm going to rise up, make a big play, gets that thing downfield before going out of bounds. And the up-tempo uh, throw. Ooh. Tough catch. Could have been made by Cephas, but it was a little off the mark. Harris, see the numbers 16 out of 30, those three interceptions. It's amazing the game is even this close with those three picks coming all in the second half, all in the third quarter. He may have to run a little bit more, but it just seems like the Houston Cougar defense is not giving him much opportunity to try something creative here. And stumbling around is Devin McEwen, the freshman from Jacksonville, Texas. <laughs> and Devin McEwen, he's one of those guys that Jeff Trailer actually taught his mother in uh, high school down there at Jacksonville. He's like, I gotta be careful about telling these guys just how old I am. He, he, he taught his mother in school. Uh, how old is I won't get started <laughs> on that. So old. Don't make any Dead Sea jokes. Okay. He, he, he knew the Dead Sea when he was just getting sick. I mean, that's one of the classics if you haven't heard that one. But he did get the first down. That's the good news at the 46-yard line. The good news if you're a Roadrunners fan. Boy, this Houston defense, they were spawn. And that that unit up front, and when we when we talked to UTSA about what, what part of this Houston defense, you know, they, they said, hey, they're salty up front especially. And they've shown it. Yeah, and uh, again, let's remind everybody that the clock rules have changed. So when you're down two scores like this late in a game, you really have to be conscious of that. you got to get these plays in and run quickly and understand that that clock's not going to be stopping on first downs the way they had previous to this year. Yeah, only inside of two minutes before the half and before the end of the fourth quarter. Deep throw and out of bounds, a little bit off the mark, going for McEwen again. they got to keep the ball on the table. Again, those deep shots just has not been accurate today. I'm just not quite sure what it is. I mean, it's first game of the year, and it's... One of the problems or one of the difficulties of not having a preseason and live snaps. You just get in an environment like this and your body just reacts just a little bit differently, not to mention that he was coming off of the leg injury. His mechanics may just be a little bit off. Yeah, maybe that knee was more bothersome than he'll admit. He avoids the rush, strong arms that throw and incomplete. Cephas was in the area. Yeah, he had he had him right there. He had Cephas yep. wide open. And Harris, again, he, he's on the move, just has not been accurate. Whether he's been stationary, whether he's been on the move, does a nice job avoiding the pressure, but just doesn't get set the proper way and gets that thing too far outside. Yeah, and they're too far for any field goal try. So on fourth and ten, they really don't have much choice from the 46-yard line of Houston. What do you call when it's fourth and ten against a defense that has three interceptions that has sacked you 
multiple times. Guys better call it quick. He's got room on the rollout, and now he's being chased. But he's going to fall down at the 35-yard line. Nelson Caesar did the job. But he got enough. Boy, that was good awareness by Harris picking up 11 yards <laughs> and getting the first down. Oh, I love it. You know, at quarterback, when everything around you is at its worst, you need to be at your best. And that's what we saw from Frank Harris. Forget about all the things that happened with the interception. It's time to make a play when we need it the most. I'm your man. Fourth down conversions. They are two out of two. And he's he is just not full speed. I don't think there's any question about that. You could see the wrap on the knee, but you just he doesn't have that same burst that we've seen from him at his healthiest. It's going to be a false start here. False start. Offense number 75, five-yard penalty, first down. They've converted both of their fourth down tries, whereas the Cougars are 0 for 2, going for it on fourth down. Penalty backs up the road runners. Just over six minutes to play. Harris keeps and open on the sideline is Joshua Cephas getting out of bounds at the six minute mark. Twelve play of the drive. Good enough for the first down. And wisely stopping the clock. Harris, deep throw. What a oh! catch! What a grab! Oh, they're going to say he's out of bounds. There's... Chris, Chris oh. Carpenter, we got to take another look at where his feet are. Looks like he held out of the football all the way through. Yeah, he certainly did. There's the, the catch. Right foot come down. Oh, it definitely uh, comes yep. down out of on, bounds. On the line. Oof. And that's, and it, it, oh, boy. Gosh, and oh. That, that placement just really could not have been any better. Excellent. I mean, that's a, I, to me, that's on the receiver. Carpenter's got to know where he is on the field and control his body. They're coming right back. Same area, different receiver. David Amador, the freshman from Houston. Was in the area, now it's third and ten. Like the idea though, and going right back at it. Yeah, Carpenter it was a tough grab. Going where the feet were. All you need is one, and even that. Well, you've taken your shots at the end zone. Now you're in third and ten. You're down ten points in the game. You don't necessarily need to get ten yards on this. You know that you're going to be going for it on fourth down. Well, if you get it, don't you, get it. Don't get too aggressive. Well, you can try the field goal here if you miss, and that'll be a strategic discussion on that sideline. The catch. He's going to get the first down. It's Joshua oh. Cephas. He's going to get the touchdown for the Roadrunners. What an effort by Joshua Cephas. The senior from Houston against Houston. At the biggest moments, your best players need to arrive, and that's exactly what happens here with Cephas catching that ball. Nice throw from Harris, but just making that little extra move and getting that thing in the end zone. There's no fight in these guys. That triangle of toughness appearing when it needs to the most in the fourth quarter. He had six touchdowns last year, second team all-conference USA at receiver. I had an honorable mention, too, as a punt returner. Three straight seasons of 50 catches or more and five touchdown catches or more. We have an injured player here. It is Malik Fleming who has two interceptions in this game for Houston. Boy, you hate to see that. Two interceptions in this game. One of your best cover guys going down in a situation like this. Meanwhile, Joshua Cephas, whose father Rodney played football at Texas Southern. His uncle Melvin Cephas played in the NFL with the Saints and the Eagles. He looked like an NFL star making that play. It wasn't just the catch for the first down. He took it into the end zone. Boy, in Cephas, he's got four straight seasons with at least 39 receptions.
capping a 94-yard drive, 15 plays, a 20-yard touchdown catch and carry for Cephas. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. Oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Your paint is really bad. What? I said, best coffee I've ever had. Should have used Bear. Sorry, side wear. No, I said, should have used Bear. Today, let's paint. Right now, get America's most trusted paint brand at a new low price. Bear, only at the Home Depot. There you go! That's what I'm talking about! Two. Is this your plan to watch the game today? Uh, yeah, I have to watch my neighbor's NFL Sunday ticket. It's not your best plan. Do you know what it is? My plan from Verizon. Switch now and they'll give you NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on them. This plan is amazing. Another amazing plan? Backing away from here very slowly. That was Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. Football season is here. Get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV on us. A $449 value. Plus, get a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. Only on Verizon. And this unfortunate, what a, a, an exceptional game. Malik Fleming with two interceptions. The East Carolina transfer. The use him at nickel safety corner. He's done everything they've asked and being helped off the field in some pain. The extra point here for the Roadrunners to get to within three. And it's a 17-14 game. Let's go back to Frank Harris's 100th career touchdown in college football with the Roadrunners as he gets it to Cephas. Yeah, Joshua Cephas catches this one over the middle. You see he extends the hands perfectly and then puts that move on Holsey to get himself into the end zone. And 123 yards receiving is a career best for Cephas. Nine grabs. And this one the biggest for the touchdown to get his team to within three points. And he, and he has really been productive. I, I said before we went to break, this is his fourth straight season. He has had four straight seasons with it. Uh, excuse me, 39 games with a reception, 39 straight right, so games. 40 he's straight. Fourth, fourth in the nation uh, with that streak. So he's uh, really put together an impressive streak, and he's well on his way to 39 receptions this year. It was easy for me to say, right? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what you're saying. But he had a catch, so this is 40 straight games with at least one catch, and here a, a career best in right. numbers. But that scoring drive, went, wow, they were on the ropes. Took over five minutes, moving 94 yards, and now Houston with a juggling act here. But breaking up across the 25-yard line, not a bad return. Parker Jenkins, here comes a flag. The freshman running back came out of there with it, returned it well, considering there was some hesitation to start. Boy, that's a you could not afford that. Both of those. During the return, holding, receiving Ooh. team, number 12, 10-yard penalty, first down, Houston. Yeah, penalty, rough penalty on Houston, that'll push him back. Meanwhile, the NFL regular season kicks off next Sunday. Huge doubleheader on Fox, 49ers go into Pittsburgh. Bryce Young makes his NFL debut, the top overall pick out of Alabama for the Panthers against Atlanta. There's other regional action in America's Game of the Week. The Packers without Rodgers. It's Jordan Love's team now against Justin Fields and the Bears. Some will see the Rams and Seahawks. It all kicks off next Sunday on Fox. And all those cool people are going to be tuned in to the Panthers at the Falcons. Well, you will be. <laughs> Back at the 10-yard line. we got a good one now. We could be looking at another overtime here. If Houston, and there's a healthy pickup of five on first down, can't dig out of this hole. Oh, this is tremendous. Just like the game a year ago, just came down to the wire. Last play of the game, UTSA tied it up with the field goal. And they've got to get some production here. And you saw that. That's a, hey, that's the way you want to start. Second and five, because it leaves your options open to run or pass. For those of you looking for the Sam Houston BYU game, it has started. Available on the Fox Sports app. Also on FS2. We're going to get you out to that game as soon as we wrap up here. And the Cougars hope to wrap things up. 
Under five to play in control of it. Smith, the pass complete. And it's Major slipping a tackle and getting upfield. Got the first down. And the clock, remember, keeps running now. It's a new thing, except the inside of two minutes, it'll stop on first downs. And that's what the Texans, excuse me, the Houston Cougars are trying to do here in Texas. We will see if Houston can repeat that same first down success because with that second and five, the last time they were able to go play action, get a nice short throw to get the first down. Smith, impressive numbers. He has protected the football and turned it over. Inside run, there's another five-plus game. Tony Mathis, Jr., on the carry. And Patrick Paul, we talked about one of the best linemen in the nation. They said he was their best puller, and he pulled out in front on that one, leading the way. That's big-time success. Second and six gives you an opportunity to threaten with run and pass. They have to respect your ability to run in this situation, so they have to commit extra defenders. They don't want to leave defenders on an island on the outside. Only 95 yards rushing as a team in this game. Eddie Mathis gets it again. He's falling. He'll be just short of the first down. Third down at about two. Big right here. The opportunity that UTSA defense, can you rise up and make a big play? And you would think, even after all the analytics that Houston and Dan and Holgerson have done, that they would not be going for it on fourth down in this situation if they can't convert here. Well, not the way their defense is played. They finally, at least the Roadrunners were able to figure that defense out. Using as much clock as they can, we're going to get a timeout on third and officially three. Houston uses the timeout. 17-14, pivotal, a tipping point, third and three with 2.45 to go in the fourth. Rosanna. Okay, who here has reached peak fall? Peak what? Peak fall. And I am wearing plaid. And I'm wearing a cardigan. I guess I am eating snickerdoodle cookie dough. And I am eating a pumpkin pie blizzard. The new DQ fall blizzard menu has reached peak fall. Pumpkin pie, snickerdoodle cookie dough, and more. They are back. I just love fall. Apparently we all do. <laughs> oh, they did it. Peak fall achieved. DQ, happy tastes good. Get saucy. Applebee's all you can eat boneless wings, just twelve ninety nine. A young Cougar fan here supporting Houston and those love you blue oil uniforms celebrating the city of Houston and football. Defense has been outstanding for the Cougars. Donovan Smith trying to close this out on a third down and three. One timeout for the Cougars. Real runners have all three and hoping for a stop. Tony Mathis is the back. Watch Donovan Smith's legs here. They blitz. He's going to throw, and what a catch of the crowd! Mike O'Laughlin, the senior tight end from Chicago, and threading the needle is Donovan Smith, and I mean literally threading wow. the needle. He just throws an absolute dart. It could have been intercepted on that one. Really fortunate, and O'Laughlin coming off the knee injury from last year, Able to make a big play at a crucial moment for the Cougars. Senior from Chicago, Illinois, with a clutch catch, his first catch of this game. And now the clock will work in favor. Mathis, that's Stacy Sneed, excuse me, as Mathis has carried the load on the ground for most of the game. And inside of two minutes, we do have a timeout here, though. Uh, UTSA has got to start using the timeouts. Got to force the hand here with it being first down. 
That BYU game is coming up next here. We have a, a couple of Roadrunner players injured. Yep. We That's, talk about the, the weather conditions in that heat. You can see them drinking and then we're stretching them out right there. Probably a cramping issue. Up next for Houston, they are at Rice and then home with TCU. There's a look at what's ahead for the 2023 Houston Cougars. Well, one thing is for sure that whoever plays this Houston team, you're going to have to deal with some tough players on defense. And the offense enough when they needed it from Donovan Smith. That third down toss into traffic for the first down was clutch after that 94 yard drive by the Roadrunners to tighten this game. Will they get the ball back and have an opportunity? Not the way the Cougars are moving the football. Yeah, and Dana Hogerson talked about the composition of his team and talked about the transition into the Big 12. Of course, we talked about his experience in Big 12 football. So it's been, it's been more than 15 seasons he's been in it. Obviously very familiar with what it's going to take for a program coming from the American Athletic Conference to make that transition. And he said that's why he's so excited about his talent and depth in the offensive and defensive line. Games are won in the trenches, not with just with the fancy toys you have on the outside. Steve tripped up at the 45. Good defensive play and another timeout. Dana Hogerson is so excited about being back in the Big 12 with this Houston Cougar program and these are the new schools in 2023 we follow the shuffle the realignment you heard Chris Peterson talking about it at halftime so some of them have already played the new kids on the Big 12 block UCF beating Kent State <laughs> Cincinnati defeating Eastern Kentucky and BYU coming up here on FS2 now on the app and following us that game with Sam Houston in just a moment. New kids. Huh? Those are we're going to get some right stuff jokes, I which think. also works for Houston being Space City. Space City. One timeout remaining. We're back to one of those pivotal third downs. Third and three. That's what it was a moment ago when Smith put the ball up and O'Loughlin made the catch. Running out of time are the Roadrunners. And let's see. Looks like he got it. Forward Smith, is there enough? They're acting like it's good enough. Haven't seen the official signal. This is a big spot. And if they need to measure, even bigger. Oh, and Donovan Smith is cramping up. Well, looks, yeah, looks where they. Oh, yeah, I've seen I've seen that tin man walk before having having those cramps. So you get them in your calves and in your hamstrings. But I think he had enough for the first down. We'll see if there's going to be a measurement. It looks like there's some conversation. That's interesting. That why they would take it. Is it fourth and one or did he get the first? Oh, wow. Smith, Smith capped it. So so. They are going to measure, but at the moment, it looks like he didn't get it. And they're saying, wow. It is fourth and one. So the Roadrunners use their last wow. timeout. Now, here's the question. Do the Cougars kick it away? Or do they gamble on fourth and one? And it is a booth review, of course. On They're, they're looking closely. And he does not give himself up as a runner, so he's going to get the full benefit. But watch the knee here, Robert. Oh, well, yeah. it does. It, I can't tell if that knee goes down. We need to get a different look here. I, I'm not so sure that that knee was down 
You have your that, camera, your that, camera that would show that, that would show. <laughs> Let's get. Let, yeah, it's tough to. And he gets you know. tripped up by his own guy there coming through the line. Watch him extend, well, that and then arm, that elbow the four, comes down. Yeah, the forearm represents. Let's check Dean Blandino. He's the rules analyst. And Dean's been with us throughout the evening. Dean, what did you see? I was rooting for you guys to get to the right body part, and you got there. It was Eventually. the right elbow. The right elbow hits first, and then we're looking at the ball. They had to make the 48. The ball is just shy of the 48. You take this look. You can see the right elbow down. Then you piece that with the sideline shot, and you can see the ball is just shy of the 48 yard. Hey, Dean, I, I know that it's supposed to be anything but a hand or a foot. How many times do you actually see it, instead of being the elbow, actually being something along the lines of the wrist or part of the forearm like how do you guys determine sure. what actually decides that so we look at the hand and the foot don't put the player down but the wrist is considered part of the hand and the ankle is considered part of the foot for purposes of this rule so it That's has to be a view. forearm or an elbow the runner got to the 48 yard line we're going to measure to see if he got the first there. All right, they're going to measure deep. And, Dean, I want you to hang around because I, I wonder, with the official booth review, do, do the Roadrunners get the timeout back in this case? They'll have an option if the ruling on the field changes. If okay. the ruling on the field changes, then they'll have an option because now we've changed something administratively. So what they're doing is they say he made the 48 which to me is a, is, is a little bit aggressive. I don't know if he quite made the 48, but they're going to measure and see if he made it. Yeah, Jeff Trailer definitely agrees with you. You see the arms going up. So there's no way that he got it there to the 48. Yeah, that review, that short. <laughs> It's short by inches. You oh, see yeah. him going in there because he's, he's coming oh, yeah. out because they wouldn't have. Yeah. No, not a first down. Not a fact. Where's Gene Steratore with his card? No, hey, they did say first down. They, that, that's, they're, they're going to give him the first down. <laughs> and you heard that, yeah, I don't, I don't blame Jeff Trailer for being upset with this because as Blandino, Dean Blandino explained, he really didn't make the 48 with that forearm. We might show you that again, or at least it appeared that way. We don't have, if we had a side view of this, which is when Dean Blandito said they're trying to match that up. So if it is going to stay a first down. Well, the reviews already occurred and, and yeah. they're getting on the ball and now they can just kill the clock yes. in victory formation. Right. So the timeout, yeah, they, they, they would have got his as Dean Blandino set the timeout back, but they lose the timeout. They lose on a, on a controversial spot, to be polite. But the Cougars did enough. Yeah, and, and Trailer's not going to let this officiating crew and this referee, Luke Richmond, it's not going to let him off the hook so easily here. The clock continuing to run on a fourth and one. Smith kept forearm down. Debatable review. Initially, there wasn't any ruling that he had the first. Well, if this is a discussion about the first down. Please reset the game clock to one minute and 45 seconds. We should not have won the clock due to UTSA calling their third and final timeout. It'll re we will replay first down. Wow. Well, it's the officials' first game too, right? I mean, everybody's kind of working their way into this thing and trying to figure out the mechanics of game day and preseason important, not just for players, not just for coaches, but for officials as well. Well, legitimate beef for Jeff Trailer and the Roadrunners, but Anna Horgerson and his 40-plus new players, outstanding defensive effort. They got the game they needed from Donovan Smith, who's Big 12 experience in their first game. The Houston Cougars in the Big 12 against the team from the American Athletic Conference did enough to get the job done. It wasn't the high-scoring game we thought, but Smith running when he needed to, protecting the football and delivering key throws. 
They'll be talking about this one in the Texas Triangle about that ruling that spot on the fourth down at the end of the game. Well, it, and Jeff Trailer, he just just knowing who he is as a person, as a coach, his background, he would say we never should have been in that position in the first place. Yes, sir. We should three. not. We should not have made those mistakes with the three turnovers. Then you don't have to worry about leaving it up to the officiating. Yeah, the three interceptions. Frank Harris. But Coming out in the third quarter of the second half, it was a three-point game at the break. And a chance for Harris and the Roadrunners to turn this game around, and it just didn't happen. It was a late drive, that 94-yard touchdown drive, and this is how it's going to wind up. Roadrunners will next play Texas State at home and Army at home. This has been an Eric Manny of production directed by Scott Katz with associate director Chirag Devasker. Along with Robert Smith, I'm Chris Mars. Thanks for hanging in there with us. An all Texas clash and hits Houston over UTSA. An I 10 battle. Thanks for being with us. College football on Fox Sports 1. And stick around, Alex Faust and Petros Papadakis will have Sam Houston and BYU live and in progress coming your way.